All right. I, I didn't call it to order. Yeah. <laughs> Reversed. <laughs> that was practice. Now we're live. We're live? All okay. Right. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is the January 14th, uh, 2021 uh, meeting of the City of Burlingame Traffic Safety and Parking Commission, uh, which we are now calling to order uh, and starting with the Pledge of Allegiance. So all rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't reveal my secret. Okay. So with that, um, Mr. Wong, uh, you were gonna do the uh, procedure here. Sure. Uh, as we have for the past year, uh, there's, for tonight's meeting, since we're not, we don't have the public Actually, and we're not in a physical place. There are three ways for the public to communicate. One will be using the uh, Zoom chat fat feature, which if someone sends some, uh, information in, we'll take a look at it. Uh, and then we'll go over as much as we can read within two or three minutes. Uh, the other is you can raise your hand. And again, you would have that two to three minute timeline to speak or at the chair's discretion. And the last one is you can email public comment at burlingame.org and we will read that online as well. So. Uh, that is it, and back to uh, Chair Wetton. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I think we're up to the roll call. Commissioner Lee? <clears throat> Commissioner Bush? Here. Commissioner Israelit? Here. Vice Chair Martos? Here. Chair Wetton? Here. Okay. Um, by the way, did you hear me just now? Did that go through? No. One okay. <laughs> um, so with that, I, uh, we can proceed to the approval of minutes. Uh, did anyone have comments on the minutes uh, that were distributed earlier in the week on the December meeting? If not, um, will anybody move to approve? I motion that we approve the minutes. Okay. I second. Okay. <laughs> okay. I second. <laughs> so, um, hearing, uh, proceeding, all in favor? Aye. Do we, do we Aye. have to do a roll call, Mr. Wong? Oh. I guess we should. Yeah, just real quick. All right. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner, yeah, Commissioner Israel? Yes. Commissioner Approved. Bush? Yes. Vice Chair Martos? Yay. And Chair Wenton? Yes. Uh, so the motion carries five uh, to zero, uh, no absences or abstentions, and we can move on um, to the next order of business, which is public comments. Um, I have to read. Do we have, oh, it looks like we have at least one member of the public. Um, Sorry, I, Andy, is the, is the Brown Act uh, notice on the agenda? I usually. Yeah, uh, it, it. Oh, oh it, here it is, sorry. Um, members of the public can may speak on any item not on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to su suggest an item for a future commission agenda may do so during this public comment period, the Ralph M. Brown Act, the state and local agency open meeting law prohibits the commission from acting on any matter that is not on the agenda. Uh, the commission chair, who is myself, may adjust the time limit in light of the number of anticipated speakers, uh, which shouldn't be an issue tonight. Uh, so do we have anybody uh, who would like to comment on anything that is not on the agenda? Hearing Hearing nothing, uh, I'm gonna close that item uh, and we can move on to uh, the community BPAC update. Hi. Hello, Chair Beatty, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you guys? Good. 
Good. Um, so I just wanted to give the update from our meeting tonight. So we had our first meeting of the year and we um, had Leisha Mai join us from the city. And what we have been talking about is implementation of the new bike and pedestrian plan. So um, the plan itself creates a project prioritization, um, but uh, given that uh, the budget for next year is unknown, sort of the scope of what budget will be allocated for these types of projects. Um, Alicia has asked BPAC to think about what, uh, where, you know, money might be distributed. And so we started, uh, we started doing that uh, task, um, even though there is already an existing list of prioritization, some of those projects are huge and some of them are smaller. Um, so we, uh, we are going to be working on those, we will likely recommend some sort of uh, combination of uh, neighborhood bike and uh, pedestrian and school projects, um, just based on our discussion tonight. Um, and then secondly, we did want to highlight that the um, there is $300,000 currently in the budget in this year budget, which runs till July for bike and pedestrian stuff. Um, right now that is set aside for um, further work on the two grant proposals that Burlingame has. Um, so that's the California Drive um, bike project and the train station project, pedestrian project. And one of the things that we're encouraging the city to do is to not go back out and do outreach um, or concept design on California Drive since that work has already been done in the bike ped plan. Um, and there is an RFP out right now for uh, services that in include that. And so we are, we are having that discussion uh, with the city because we feel pretty strongly that with the limited budget we're likely to have that we would rather uh, be really super efficient with uh, what we're spending on these projects at this stage. That's all. Oh. Chair, Can may we, I ask a question? You're on mute. Sorry, uh, I Chair Wetton, <laughs> may I ask uh, a here, question? Go ahead, go ahead, yeah, Commissioner. Uh, Miss, thank you through the chair, Miss Beatty. Um, so when you said that you would like to, you you guys had discussed, BPAC had discussed holding off on developing more concepts for California, did you mean the, the discussed proposal for possibly extending the bike uh, lane in Complete Streets um, south of Broadway, or did you mean the, the fixes that we were discussing uh, working on north of Broadway? So this project, the grant proposal is south of Broadway, and I think it runs from Broadway to Oak Grove, unless I'm, I, I think that that's the grant project. And so the city is moving forward with that piece, which we are in full support of. Um, the issue is more that they, we have already done a lot of work on this, right? Like we've done outreach. We know what people think about uh, using this corridor and we have some high level concepts from Alta. So some of this work has been done. And I think our request is that uh, any work be built on top of that and not be in duplication of, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Just wanted to clarify. Uh, I was uh, on mute trying to ask a similar question. <laughs> so I think that um, is- It's easier when you're not on mute. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but that's an interesting perspective from the BPAC uh, in terms of streamlining things. Uh, does anyone else have questions about that? I, I'd be interested, Mr. Wong. I mean, does does the city staff have a view on that? Or is there is there a legal issue there, or is it or in terms of streamlining and and sure. determining you've gotten sufficient feedback through the chair? So. Uh, the, the project, we, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're taking the concepts, we're advancing the concepts in the bike ped master plan. And that will be where we start. We're not, you know, normally when you've gone to these, our first outreach is, you know, we, we take in the information. And this one, we'll be taking in information, but we're also gonna be presenting because we, we're gonna do some targeted outreach to those businesses, to those folks that are along the border. That, that's, the, that's the point of this one. It's not gonna be, uh, as big of an effort as a bike ped master plan because we're just focusing on you know the folks that are there and 
mm -hmm. because they may, may or may not have been part of the process. So we're showing them this just because they have to be part of the discussion because some of the items we may be doing is, you know, uh, re removing parking is one of the options, things like that. So that that's where that's at. We're not looking to go back and say, hey, what do you think? And give us any of your ideas and we'll do it. We're, we're, not, we're not at that stage. We're past that. Got it. Okay. And if I, if I may, through the chair? Yeah, please go ahead. Um, so uh, I guess the question is like, can we like funnel the outreach through the TSPC on on as uh, such that like we we don't have to like engage the consultants to sort of run the typical public engagement forums, um, or were you thinking more along the lines of like direct mail or or, or calls from city staff? Through the chair, uh, it could be both. We've kind of looked at, and this was a question brought up last month about, or I'm sorry, a question brought up at our pre-agenda meeting about the uh, uh, streamlining. So anything we can do, we will look at. And uh, you know, normally it's been, you know, we, we'd like to be able to bring stuff just through the commission, but norm, uh, I think what's been happening is we've tried to expand upon that. Right, we're trying to get, you know, turn over every leaf, that type of. Attitude, so that, that can be a possibility if that's what uh, everyone feels. But we've been trying to just try to get as much outreach, and let, you know, we sort it out here. But potentially, if we just have TSPC meetings and cut that, that saves us some meetings. Yeah, well, I think that's what we're here for. So I think if if that helps stream thing streamline things along, uh, I think if I may, good. I wouldn't uh, want to yeah, cut out. Really. Thank you, Chair. I wouldn't want to cut out BPAC from the uh, public comment, though. Um, so to put things through BPAC, I, I know from experience, we think long and hard about each intersection, each improvement. Um, we want the most bang for our buck, the most safety and access for the buck. So um, we have, we have a lot yeah. of qualified people on the committee, so they would very much like to be part of it also. Thank you. Through the chair, ideally we'd have, you know, a joint meeting with BPAC at this that we've had before and then invite the community and it'd be, you know, a bigger presentation. That would be a longer presentation than I typically give, obviously, right? We would yeah. have, present the whole project and then it could be one of those longer meetings or if there's enough people that come up, you'll, you'll have to use the timer. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, we've talked about doing joint meetings before and I, I, I would like to see that. So I, I think that would be a good, good way to handle it. Um, okay, uh, does anyone else have questions or comments uh, before we proceed to the next item? Hearing none. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item 6B. Thank you, uh, Ms. Beattie for tuning in <laughs> and uh, now we'll proceed to the uh, the Highland Garage. Uh, Mr. Wong, you are on mute. Sorry about that. Thank you, Chairwin. Hopefully, uh, I'm just trying to share my screen. All right, so I'm gonna run through these first few slides pretty quick. You've seen them, you've literally seen them before. Tonight we'll be talking about the parking restrictions options on a, for the Highland Garage. Um, we had this a couple of meetings ago where we had the two options. First option was to split the lot from long, to be shared with long-term and short-term. Uh, option B was make the lot entirely long-term and then uh, try to maybe convert some of the parking along Howard to a uh, short term. Uh, here's that section of Howard. Uh, what we talked about is here are the number of spaces that we would uh, pick up. Again, what we're looking at is we'll be in excess of uh, about 116 long-term spaces that we were gonna trade for the uh, 97 short terms, I'm sorry, long-term spaces on Howard. So there's still be a slightly surplus of long-term spaces in the new parking garage, but uh, I, I mean, we'd, we'd be picking up 97 short-term spaces. 
So that was option B. And some of the comments we got back uh, last time was uh, regarding the pricing. I'm sorry, uh, about trying to incentivize parking at the garage, which included uh, reducing the fee to less than what it typically costs to park in a long-term lot of $3 per day. Uh, and again, there were some uh, other comments about uh, making permits, uh, doing that to the uh, permit program as well, making a special permit for parking in the lot, as well as seeing if folks would be interested in making it a perk that businesses might purchase it for their employees. So where we left this was uh, we were going to do some polling and uh, Mr. San Filippo is our uh, economic specialist is in, but uh, he provided, uh, we asked some questions. We did some polling questions. We did about eight questions uh, that we shared with you folks. And uh, here are the results. Uh, sorry, we didn't, we got back to you today. As I was telling uh, the chair earlier last week, we only had about uh, five responses, five to seven. So we doubled them. Uh, thanks to Mr. Sanfilippo's efforts of uh, contacting both the DBID as well as sending out uh, additional reminders. So again, the first question we had, do you support this recommendation about converting the long-term uh, parking along Howard to sh uh, two hours? And for the most part, uh, yes, right? Over 50% of the folks agreed with that. Uh, we had about almost a third indicate no and a couple were unsure. So. I think uh, out of all these questions, no one skipped any questions. So it's really based upon these seven uh, responses. I'll kind of skip over two. Um, you'll see that on the next slide. So uh, question two was how many employees do you have? Column, this question here represents the different sizes. They range from one to 26, business, uh, 26 employees. Question three was how many of your employees drive uh, and the majority, we've got 90% of the people driving uh, to work. Question four, uh, kind of trying to guess, the, these questions don't necessarily rely on the garage directly, but they do give us an idea of where they're coming from. You know, we ask questions five miles or less, between five and 10, uh, 10 and 20, and over 20 miles. Uh, you can see most people are coming from five miles outside about th almost 30 percent or five miles or less while the rest of folks and actually the predominant are over 10 miles from the uh area so kind of gives you that idea as far as i think this qu uh, question was generated from chair wetton trying to think about transit options things like that how folks get here uh mr wong sure did we did we end up asking where the people were coming from no, uh, we broke it down to this because that where would have been could, could have been all over the place, and we had already submitted the questions, and that was okay. I didn't want to have some answered one way and then others answered another way. Okay. I guess one question five. Question. This is actually one that we've always asked, and we've kind of we we never got good responses. This seems like maybe our best effort to date. We've got most people, 70% of the people parking in the long-term lots that answer the survey. Uh, folks admitted, it looks like 17% for at the, they park in the short-term lots on street, and then another 6% parking in short-term parking lots. Uh, we've had, uh, actually most of the people park on street while we had uh, about 50% parking I'll have to look at that, that data. But if you look at the numbers, you know, you've had 12 people that park in a long-term space, but then some people do park on residential streets. So we've got roughly uh, seven of the 17 parking long-term, uh, uh, parking in the residential streets. And then we have a couple that uh, use alternate trans uh, transit to get to work. Through the chair, one clarifying question. So, like, were they allowed to, to mark more as many as applied? No, and that's why we we're hoping to get individual responses. Uh, this is no, because it adds up to more than yeah, percent. That's what must have what have happened. I, I'm sorry, I, I looked at the full results, I didn't look at the numbers. Uh, that must have been what happened here. If one business they gave it to, they asked a couple employees and they got a couple responses. 
So okay, so they, they marked they marked more than one. They marked more than one. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, this is one that we we've asked before. Are they familiar with the program? And most people were, it seems like. So the word is getting around, but we you know we can still do more to improve that. Uh, overwhelming on this one that yes, they would uh, like a reduction in rates if they were and would be attractive for them to, to use the garage. And the last one was, uh, you know, it's kind of split on this one. Would you as an employer be interested in purchasing a long term permit for your employees? So, uh, so those are the eight questions we asked. I mean, we could refine them, but this seems like something we could also do on an annual basis to see if it changes or we get more respondents. But uh, that kind of gives you a little bit more information that you had to go with your decision or your recommendation as far as what we want to do with the uh, garage. Uh, with that, that ends the uh, presentation with that. Take any questions or and you guys feel free to discuss. Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> Hang on, uh, Commissioner Lee. Uh, I, typically, we well, I just want to confirm we don't have we don't have any members of the public to go to first. Typically, we would. But there's, there's, I don't see anyone there. Uh, Commissioner Lee, if you want to go first, why don't you go ahead? Yes, I have my concern. I have a few concerns. When is the four-hour parking um, along Howard Avenue? It's a lot of hair salons, so you go in, you get your hair done. Um, Maybe you get a cut, you get a color, you get a blow dry, and you're pushing a good three hours. Um, so the four hour spots are going to be really valuable still to have on Howard Drive. It, would there be a way to make keep those more expensive than four hour slots that would be in the long term parking that we would prefer employees use? Um, that's one. Again, Another question is about the safety um, and the perceived safety of walking back to your car at night. I particularly would not park in long-term parking if I was parking after dark as an employee. I wouldn't. So um, how do we handle that? And we also, I'd like to work on that intersection where people have to cross to get to their job from the parking, which is Howard and Lorton, which is one of the top Twitter's collisions for collision intersections for pedestrians in our community. So first is the four hour spots, which is where people want who go to get their hair done. And then the darkness issue and the safety issue and then safety issue of that intersection for pedestrians that we're encouraging them now to use more. I think through the chair, if I if I can maybe just because I recall the previous conversation, is that okay if I just address two of those? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, we did talk we did talk to Sergeant Perna to ensure that we're going to try and ensure that the garage is lit after dark. So you know we'll have to address those safety issues. Um, and I think the other reason when we were discussing it is that even if you have a hair salon on Howard and you're gonna be parked for a, um, longer than two hours, I mean, we had decided that because that garage is so close that it, it really would be not a big onus to go half a block and park in the garage as opposed to street parking. So we thought we still had availability for long-term parking even more so than just employee in that garage. And if I misquoted anyone or uh, didn't summarize our, our previous discussion well, feel free to correct me. Through the chair. Um, yes, I, I, I did forget, uh, I did confirm the garage will be lit 24 seven because that is, uh, because we're, again, we're allowing folks to charge their vehicles there overnight. So because of that, um, that is uh, what we have. As far as uh, Lorton and Howard, um, I'll, I'll have to look. I, I, I imagine that's in the bike ped master plan. I'm sorry I didn't take a look at it with that question, but and we can yeah. look at uh, additional improvements to that uh, crosswalk because it is 
it's not quite a mid block crossing, but it, it, it has no control. So it's something we can look at. Uh, it's a four way stop. It's just tiny little stop signs way over to the side. It's not high visibility crosswalks. I'm, sorry, I'm thinking of high, I'm thinking of high yeah. limit power. So oh, I, I, sure. I think um, we should look at the intersection. It's importance Absolutely. has increased, but uh, of course, I think we'll make the decision we make tonight, assuming that we're doing everything we can to make sure that intersection is safe. Uh, but tonight I think is about deciding about the two versus four hours on Howard and, and, and the garage. Um, thank you, uh, Commissioner Israel. Um, do you, since while we've got you, did you have any other comments? Um, no. Um my okay well my comments were it does look like most overwhelmingly most are in favor of having this be um the parking garage being for long-term employee parking so um you know there are some that uh, a third it looks like that were not as enthusiastic 30 percent. but i think you know twice as many were more on board um i just wanted to comment um that i thought where's my notes that it was interesting that a third of the um, respondents said their employees drive five miles or less to work. So when life returns, this is not about, you know, um, designating, you know, how long people park in the garage, but just a little thought in your head that if we get back to normal and we're really congested and having trouble with parking, that could be something that would be an easy fix with maybe Uber vouchers or something if we get to that point. So just put that in your, it's food for thought. <laughs> helpful, uh, helpful suggestion. Okay, uh, uh, Commissioner Bush, you're next. Yeah, I um, I agree with Commissioner Israel. Um, I think that we should um, I think that we should move the um, the street side parking to two hours to promote greater circulation um, and. Uh, I don't think that it's too far to walk from the garage if you're going to be going there, there for longer. I do think that we should offer like a reduced rate, uh, a reduced rate parking permit to employers for the top two floors um, and not like the um, and, and not the bottom floors. Um, and, and then I think that we should. We should um, we should look at like the subsidies for um, alternative modes of transportation, as Commissioner Israel uh, uh, pointed out. Um, I, I do note that like you know the, the primary purpose of, of parking meters is to increase flow, um, and so I think that we like if there is starts to be more congestion, I think that we should raise our rates and then try and compensate those people who are driving shorter distances through. You know voucher programs and, and public transportation. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Martos, uh, your thoughts. You're on mute. Okay. Not any longer. We're good. Yeah. So I, I still have the same opinion. I think the rates in that garage should be reduced so that we can incentivize people to park there. It looked like the people that responded to the survey felt the same way. I would have liked to see more of the employers uh, step up and say they'd be willing to pay for parking for their employees in that lot. But maybe the ones that are willing to do it can, can do it and attract more employees to their businesses. Um, I liked what Commissioner Lee said about that crosswalk. <clears throat> we do need to bolster that and make that more visible and safer as more people are crossing that road. Um, the, the parking in the garage at night, um, parking is, I think the meter shut off at six o'clock on Howard. So people can park as long as they want after six o'clock on Howard. Um, but I understand that they're in the lot before it gets dark and they're there for three or four hours, they're gonna head back to the lot after dark. But I think with the lighting of the lot and um, Rolling Game is a pretty safe city. And, and if they feel threatened or concerned, there's always gonna be parking on the street of Howard after six o'clock. Um, so I, I'm still in favor of option B with a reduced rate and also converting 
the long-term parking on Howard is short-term parking. Thank you, Commissioner Martos, Vice Chair Martos. Uh, the, uh, so I'll make my comments quick because I think everybody covered the key points. Um, I agree with all the sentiments that I think it's, well, it is important that we try and gain short-term parking uh, close to our downtown. I think the shortages of short-term parking uh, can be severe, it affects the businesses. Maybe not every business agrees with that, but you know, we we see a mix of opinions from the survey. Uh, I think having people be able to drive into the downtown and, and find a space on the street uh, who, you know, who are, who are shoppers is important. And I think if someone knows they're gonna be there for a few hours, we wanna condition people to go use the garage. Uh, the garage will result in a fairly large net gain of long-term spaces. Uh, in the downtown. So there will someone who wants a long-term space, there'll be a lot more of them now than there were before uh, we built this garage. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I agree that we should think of think hard about how we can incentivize to get people to the, lo the longer term parkers to use the top two floors. It, I'm actually quite encouraged by the result uh, that a majority of the businesses would be willing to buy these things for their employees. Uh, we don't need them all to do it. <laughs> if a majority of them are doing it, I think that that's really good. Um, and so I'm really open to doing lower rates. Uh, you know, I've always had this idea, which is only an idea for the world we had before and not now where if we're seeing really, really bad congestion on Thursdays and Fridays offering Monday through Wednesday permits to encourage people to maybe try and come in by another mode of transportation Thursday and Friday. Uh, but I also don't know what the world post COVID will look like. I don't know if that's a good idea post COVID. It, it, I just have no idea, which is hard to do this job and have no idea. Um, you know, I would note if people start working part time and partial weeks, you could have a lot of people hanging around the downtown Thursdays and Fridays, because that's when they don't go in. But we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, so I, I think that leaves me uh, where uh, the last few speakers are, which is the plan proposed is the right, uh, is the right plan uh, and seems to be supported by the local businesses uh, on balance, <laughs> subject to some, maybe to some dissenters. Uh, so uh, Mr. Wong, should we proceed with a motion or uh, should we move to approve what you intend to do here? Uh, through the chair, I believe, uh, yeah, you can support and make the motion to support the option B. Uh, you, you can make it just a suggestion, option B. And we would discuss this at pre agenda and maybe just make the caveat that um, with, along with uh, reduced rates for the garage itself. And then I, I was uh, talking with some of my colleagues and then maybe we'll just say in case, you know, because the, Reducing rates is uh, up to council and maybe just have them if they just decide they want to continue the rates because of the current rates that they revisit it, continue to revisit it because you feel strongly that uh, it's, it further incentivizes uh, parking in that garage. So yeah, just kind of keep pushing it, that's all. Since, and yeah, and, and will we be also, do, uh, will the motion include uh, the change on Howard? Uh, you can make that as well. I'm sorry. Okay. And, and, and turning all those lots into, or turning all those spaces to two hour spaces. So. Okay. Uh, does anybody have an appetite for taking a crack at this or should? <laughs> it's I... a lot to include. I really wish we could just say option B as amended, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, I would like to, I would like to weigh in on Howard if we're, if we're, if we have a majority on that as well. Uh, we could do it in two separate motions and just make it clean. I, I, I'll, before we go to that, I, I will say, while I am philosophically in favor of considering reduced rates, I don't know that we have to make give the council advice on that tonight. Um, because I frankly, just we just have no idea what the conditions will be uh, when this thing goes live, how constrained we'll be. 
uh, how necessary it will be if we get back to normal life and we're seeing some of the patterns we saw before, I think I'd be more than happy to weigh in and, and make suggestions. I'm, I'm never short of that, but I, I wonder if it's just premature to do that tonight. Mm -hmm. the, I, I'm open to different views if anyone wants to disagree with me. I agree. I think that, I think, I think it might, perhaps we don't need to tell city council. I mean, we don't need to include the revisiting. Well, I don't know. Um, unless Mr. Wong feels like we do need to include it so that we are ensure that it happens. Um, um, you don't need to, you could just make the recommendation that, you know, to, to incentivize uh, the parking garage, parking structure that folks will go there, reduce rates. That's your recommendation. Right. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner Bush. Yeah. Can I take a stab at a motion? Yeah, please. Oh, yeah. It's your last meeting, right? Yeah, it's now or never. <laughs> um, I, I move that we recommend um, the uh, plan B um, be adopted by city council um, along with um, reducing the time period for parking on Howard Avenue to two hours and ensuring full occupancy of the new garage structure by considering incentive structures with employers. Okay, uh, do we have a second for that motion? I second that motion, okay. very well put. All in favor, oh wait, we gotta do a roll call. I'm just getting everybody ready. All in favor, uh, let's do a roll call. <laughs> Commissioner Lee? Aye. Commissioner Bush? Aye. Commissioner Israelit? Aye. Vice Chair Martos? Aye. Chair Wetton? Aye. And motion carries 5 0. Okay. Well done. Way to go out, Commissioner Bush. <laughs> uh, that brings us to uh, the, the 2021 uh, TSPC priority list. Uh, and um, all of us, except Commissioner Lee, and I'm sorry, Commissioner Lee, to single you out here. All of us have been through this once. So I'm gonna take uh, a minute, and we all need the refresher anyway. Uh, I'm gonna take a minute to explain how we do this. Uh, it's called the Novorosky method, It be, uh, which is the commissioner who introduced this. I believe Commissioner Bush holds his seat on the commission, is that right? Um, so I, I will, I guess I'll come to see that seat now get filled a second time. Uh, and the way it works is we start off, we just go around in a circle, uh, and we each state one priority and where we think it should sit on the list. And we usually, I, all right, someone will have to tell me, set me straight. I think what we do is, and this sometimes takes a little longer, is we get everything that we think should be on the list on the list. So that's a little bit of a brainstorming session. Everybody can put things on the list. And we usually will debate a little bit just to see if we can um, categorize these things cleanly so we don't end up with a 15 item priority list, which the city council has told us more than once they don't like. Uh, once we have our items, we go around in a circle and everybody gets to take whatever priority they want and put it wherever on the list they want to. And you get one shot and then it goes to the next person. And it keeps going until no one has any more changes. And as crazy as this sounds, it somehow does always work. So you go around a couple times and inevitably you end up with a priority list that it reflects a pretty good consensus. Um, the last thing I'll explain is, is the two columns. So we really do all of this on the left side, on the left column, because those are things that we prioritize, that we want to see reflected in our agenda and we wanna focus on. It will filter into also the subcommittees that we'll discuss in the next item. Um, sometimes we'll come up with topics that are important to us, but we realize that it's, they're not really appropriate to have a whole agenda around it. And we put those to the right and those are usually things that um, are kind of a watch list 
uh, that's kind of a loaded term tonight, but uh, you know, a, a list of things that we um, hope to get reports back on in engineering items or, or maybe big items that may come up could become an agenda item. It's not precluded, but it's, it's not things that we will drive through the year. Uh, and anybody listening in should feel free to elaborate on that or say if they disagree with any of those characterizations. Well explained, sounds great. Okay, love it. <laughs> um, so with that, I, uh, Mr. Sure? Wong, I don't know if you want to say anything. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I, there was a question that uh, came in from Commissioner Lee uh, asking about okay. bike share that I just to quickly explain since we're going through it. Bike share is what we previously, the city had, line bikes, where there are bikes that folks can rent and ride around and bring back. <clears throat> That's what that topic was. Right. Uh, so I'll go ahead and if you guys, if folks have more to add to, so I'm sorry, to roll back a little bit. If you go to the end of the engineer's report, as Chair Wetton pointed out, these are usually the topics on the, uh, the green ones here are the staff ones that we've, we're, we've addressed, we're looking at. And then on this, uh, the pink and yellow ones are the ones that the commission has. Uh, feel free to add to these and then we just kind of sort through. Uh, sort through and we'll add to them and then you folks do the Novorowski method to narrow it down and we'll rank them at that point. Okay, okay so how do we actually do this? I don't understand. Do I cut? Do I paste? What am I doing? Uh, you you don't have well. to, uh, yeah, so uh, Commissioner Lee, you don't have to do anything in terms of cutting and pasting. Mr. Wong will handle that. Uh, you just have to try and uh, make decisions about how you want to prioritize things. So um, we'll, we'll take this in order. Uh, we'll, I can, we can start with someone else, Commissioner Lee, so you can sort of watch us get started. Uh, and again, first, we're just going to make sure that this is the right list. I suspect it's not. I suspect it's going to change a little bit. And uh, we'll, we'll make some adjustments. And then once we are all agreed that everything we want on the list is on the list and everything we don't want on the list is off the list, we'll go through the Noah Orlsky method of prioritizing. Uh, so with that, <laughs> um, and I, I think also these yellow ones aren't, weren't really priorities. I think those were just sort of ancillary things that we wanted to try and do this year that sort of we just put at the bottom. I don't, I don't think those were actual priorities. I think it's really, um, it was really eight. Um, so that's, I believe that's last year's list. So I think we can kind of revisit. Obviously we had no idea in January of 2020 what, what 2020 was gonna look like. Uh, it's hilarious that we were gonna, thought we were gonna talk about line bikes. <laughs> so sad, sad. I would like to talk about line bikes, but um, okay. So uh, with that, um, I guess I'll, I'll turn it over to um, Commissioner Bush, maybe on a valedictory basis. Uh, do you want to suggest, is there anything that you think we ought to be talking about in your, uh, in your absence um, that you hope we, we carry forward in the coming yeah. year? I mean, I guess like where my mind was going was predominantly along like um, bait, I think that we should move Bayshore uh, over onto the um, the main topic list, and I, I think the reason that I, I say that is I think that like you know under current conditions at least I think that like there's like a stronger emphasis on like using like better utilizing those parklands uh, so that people have like uh, ways to do uh, to do fitness, and I and I guess if I were to roll that up into like a larger theme, it is like sort of like temporary uh, temporary pedestrian and bicycle accommodations um, going along with like some of the work that was done um, in front of the Burlingame High School um, and things of that nature. Like, um, you know, as we continue the year, like what are some of those additional things that we want, want to potentially do? Um, would okay. that be... Well, would that be bike shore access and transportation choices? Like to get, cause you gotta get over there. 
and then you have to use the facilities. Um, sorry, sorry, what are you referring to? Well, uh, oh. the Bayshore Corridor studies that we want to move to the left, is it more about, like, it's about the access, right? Because you want to get over there not only in a motor vehicle, you want to be able to get your 12-year-old to be able to bike over there, um, your right. mom to be able to walk over there. So, so go ahead. I'm sorry, Commissioner Lee. Would it be for the access? To get well, I, I think there's two issues here. I, I think one is, I think when you talk about access, I think a lot of that folds under bike ped plan, right? Which is kind of just the network and improvements throughout the network, which includes connecting to the Bay Shore. And the Bay Shore is sort of uh, something unto itself. You know, it's a separate facility. There's a lot of um, private ownership over over it, uh, which is makes it a little bit difficult to address. Um, and I think uh, it's really a separate set of decisions and, and focus, the Bay Shore itself, as opposed to connectivity. So, I, um, and then, so I, I do think the Bay Shore is its own thing, uh, and we, I, I actually would agree. I, I don't want to jump ahead, I'll wait my turn, but I, I, I agree with that as a separate item. Um, and I'd, I'd be interested to hear what other people think about the temporary stuff. I, I think that might be, in my mind, I think we should think about how we can be more able to give input on that stuff for sure. I, I certainly agree with that sentiment. Um, so maybe a, so maybe it's a good idea. But let me, let me uh, throw it, uh, Commissioner Bush, did you have anything else or? Um, I think that those were the like the two main things, and, and maybe actually, I as I was thinking about it, I might want to relabel my second the second one, which is like, how do we think about um, uh, bicycle and pedestrian experimentation um, with temporary with temporary measures? So, so like you know, sort of how do we like have like more of an experiment experimentation of uh, on on various things? Um, yeah. Through the chair, yeah. yeah. Maybe if, I, if I could, uh, maybe we'll call those trial quick builds. Obviously, the quick builds are what we things we can do with striping and then trial. It's definitely a temporary nature. Yep. Um, Great. Love the phrase. I'm a little okay. confused by that. Sorry. Uh, number two is the bike ped plan update, but now we're into bike uh, plan implementation and pedestrian plan Im implementation. Um. So, so trial quick builds, um, I'm qu not quite following that. Okay, uh, through the chair, maybe uh, I should go over, at least on the green list, what those are so, you fo so that might pull some things out as far as these are specific projects that, that the staff is working on. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, uh, Caltrans El Camino Quarter, that's the reimagine El Camino Real project that's going on. The Hoover School update, this is a carryover from a few years ago when Hoover School was uh, reopened and then the commission was uh, critical in getting some of those pedestrian improvements and we continue do, to do some, as we've mentioned in the last couple of engineers reports. Downtown parking strategies, that's probably one of the broader ones where we've talked about basically how to improve circulation, how to gain more capacity, how to get folks out of their cars. So that, that's probably the more broad one, but it's also fallen on, obviously what we've talked about this year is the parking garage, uh, some of the parklets, like how to get folks, um, that's been part of it because we've removed some parking capacity in order to get some of these facilities in. City Hall traffic calming, floor Bunda. This was an effort where we talked about the, the roundabout in front of the library and City Hall, as well as some of those streets along Floribunda, including Ulmer and Ansel. Uh, wow. California Roundabout, I believe this was uh, kept on just to see for the commission to have any questions about uh, any changes or we've had any data on that. Oak Grove, Carolyn Traffic Signal, that's the uh, signal where it's currently under design right now. Uh, this one we may be changing the bike pad plan update forward to BPAC. Uh, this is something that's now finalized, but it, it's still 
we're going to be using parts of this for grant opportunities as well as uh, projects to discuss as we've talked about California Drive. Rec center parking, I believe that was the impacts of where everyone was going to, how we were going to distribute the existing parking, but that may have been something that's been, uh, been already, uh, it's already been kind of decided as the facility is now gone. Old Bayshore quarter study, this is an existing uh, project that we put on hold with the uh, COVID because of the, I mean, most of the businesses out there primarily are some of the hotels and they were dealing with other issues during the pandemic, but we're going to slowly bring that one back this year. Grant, grant opportunities is another broad topic, but it's uh, just bringing forward the grant opportunities we have and discussing it and what choices we have. Uh, Broadway grade separation, uh, again, providing you an update and uh, as an, well as uh, we'll have a venue for when we start getting through some of the final design now. We'll be showing some of that. San Mateo Peninsula Overcross, yeah, Peninsula Avenue Overcrossing. That's just a discussion with the project that the city of San Mateo has of uh, creating a full uh, interchange at Peninsula. School speed limit updates. Uh, can't remember why that one was kept on, but we have reduced the speed limits in front of schools to 15. And maybe it was just a, a feedback loop to see how it's going. School safety improvements, usually another broad topic that we always have on here uh, just to bring up. Lion Oak traffic calming. Obviously, we've just completed the traffic calming report. And uh, as you'll hear, we're starting to implement uh, 300 Burlingame Point traffic impacts, uh, just what's going on out there and the, giving you updates on the changes. And uh, Broadway, California is our biggest intersection that we will uh, be getting back to now that things are coming back, but we will try to work with that one. But that's obviously because that's our one of our worst intersections. Yeah. Okay, that, that's helpful, Mr. Wong. Um, Oh, I just don't know what number 300 Burlingame Point traffic impacts. I don't know what that is. Sorry. All right. Uh, through the chair. That's the uh, Oculus uh, going out at 300 Burlingame Point. There were concerns of the traffic impacts, like where folks parking, what's the circulation look like, what's the road. But I think when this got put on there, there's been a significant amount of changes out there since we first brought this up. We now have the roadway that's connected. We have signals out there. We have uh, pedestrian improvements, I think, are uh, at least the sidewalks open. And I'm not sure how the, I haven't been out there lately, but to see how the uh, uh, Bay Trail is. But th that's, that's what it was. It was just a discussion point to provide updates, which we have as far as things have opened. The cities have has accepted the roadway, and now it's just waiting for the development to actually folks to move in to work whenever they do. Okay. Um, so, with that, maybe we, someone else could weigh it. Uh, Commissioner Israel, uh, do you have some suggestions? And by the way, feel free to suggest subtractions as well, uh, if need be. Um, sure. Do you have some suggestions? Um, I kind of forget how this goes, like how many things um, I'm allowed to bring up at this stage. But I think we can, I think we should remove Halloween traffic impacts <laughs> because we didn't even have Halloween last year. <laughs> we don't know if we're going to have Halloween next year. And also because I think that we investigated that pretty thoroughly, what the police can and cannot do, what the block can and was willing to do and was not willing to do. Yeah. And I think, so I think that we addressed that. I, um, I would, I would, this is, you know, this is my pet peeve. I, I would like to just maybe just have a check-in. I, I think the, what we did last not last year, two years ago now, unfortunately. What what the measures the city took for the last actual Halloween were good. I, I wouldn't mind if we think we're gonna have Halloween again, just have a check-in to confirm that we're, we're similarly prepared. We could well, maybe put it on the green list. That's my like suggestion. A, yeah. Informative, you know, yeah. an important point. Yeah, that's, um, that's what I would hope, yeah. So the only thing, like I've been giving it thought and the only thing that has been brought up that that I think maybe I would like to add is, is because it's a little more specific, even though it's already included in school safety and things like that. But I think that um, with working on El Camino Real, um, I'd like to address school safety issues specifically with El Camino Real and McKinley, um, as far as like school lighted school crossings and fighting or working for that. 
And um, it's even been suggested by some of the PTA members, like having um, ball bollards put around the open play ground um, because they fear that the fence would not be strong enough to, to stop you know, an errant car um, when kids are on the playground. So I don't know if that, can that be a separate point rather than just general school safety? Uh, so, you know, I, we have, I just, let me give you, um, we have been criticized by council for coming up with a 15 item list in the past. So we have tried to stick to <laughs> slightly broader topics, which doesn't preclude addressing things that we think are important such as what you just suggested. So, you know, we had school safety, school traffic and safety is always for a long time has made the top of the list. Um, and okay. that usually encompasses, this year was a quiet year for school traffic, but typically there's different issues that come our way involving school traffic. And we have a few agenda items and a subcommittee dedicated to it. Uh, so, so, so in the interest of uh, streamlining things, then yeah. we can not have that be a separate pullout. Yeah, um, I would but I, I'll that. just mention it as something that I'd be interested in working on this year. Yeah, so. we could certainly put that down as a, and we can talk about it at the end of the evening when we're talking about future agenda items. We can flag that as something we want to get or come around to, uh, and the fact that it aligns with the high priority. You know, and then um, bike share. Oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead. No, please go ahead. And then bike share. You know, I think we need to put that on the back burner because <laughs> I don't even know that there are companies that are out there that are ready to work on that. I'm, it's sad, but I'm 2022, maybe. <laughs> so that that's just the first low hanging fruit thing. That is there. Know, I, I, yeah. Is there just? Uh, I pro I think I agree with that, Commissioner Islet. But I just quick check with Mr. Wong. Is there any? Is there any news that is coming this year on bike share? I know we thought there might be news this year on bike share, which is for obvious reasons didn't happen. Um, did, is there anyone working on that or is, or is it appropriate? Is Commissioner Isler correct that this is likely 2022? Uh, through the chair, I will check with Ms. Michael. Um, yeah. If there's something we can just, I, we can provide to you quickly in the engineer's report just a quick yeah. update, but I mean, whether there's a lot of discussion on it, probably not likely. Yeah. So, okay. So that makes, so that, yeah, that brings me around to your suggestion, Commissioner, as well. It's probably a right column item at best so, this year. Through the chair, would that include, what about scooters? They're used all the time up in the city and there's a lot of companies doing scooters. Would that be part of the bike share program to throw scooters in there too? Yeah, that would capture scooters if we decided to do scooters. Could we rename it that? Bike and scooter sharing? Absolutely. Let's do that. In the right column, bike and scooter share. Uh, good suggestion. Um, commissioner Israelit, I don't, sorry. I, I want to make sure you're done before we move on to the next commission. Um, yeah, I think the only other thing is, I mean, I know we have electric vehicles on there, but I don't really remember what we were going to do about like what that really encompassed just like thinking ahead yeah. of so this is one uh, this is probably something we would have to do with the planning commission uh i actually think it is uh very worthwhile uh because we have a i'm going to say my piece about this which i've said already a couple times but our governor has said that they're not, we're not gonna be selling any new non-electric vehicles in 14 years. Uh, and our buildings are all gonna be around in 14 years. And if we don't have parking garages that uh, can accommodate all these electric vehicles, we're gonna have a big problem. Uh, so our new buildings have lots of uh, accommodations for electric vehicles. We have reach codes, that's great, but the problem is the overwhelming majority of buildings in 2035 will be the ones we have today. They won't all be new. So we, I would like to engage with the planning commission in thinking about what we're gonna do uh, to be ready for that. So it's, a, it's not an immediate okay. problem, but it, it is okay. a long-term problem I'd like us to think about. Okay, so then my last point would just be, can we, what, what, let's just change that to electric vehicles discussion with planning 
uh, city planning. Yeah. You know, like we have city council, you know, let just so we remember, like we're thinking forward future. That's what we're okay. And that's, that's it. That's, that's a good suggestion. Uh, Okay. So uh, commissioner Lee, you've seen a couple people put some suggestions on there. Uh, Do you want to suggest any addition or subtraction at this point? Uh, You're on mute commissioner Lee. Number two, bike ped plan update. I'm suggesting that we make it bike ped plan implementation because we're, we're there now. So it's not make an update, make it an implementation. Um, for number three, I, um, <clears throat> we, we're trying to eliminate traffic around schools. So I'd rather call it school transportation and safety issues. This traffic implies only motor vehicles. Transportation encompasses everything. You know, the scooters, the bikes, the walkers, the buggies. So I'd rather call it transportation. And then number four, neighborhood traffic calming and control. Because there's a number of places where neighborhoods want a few stop signs and it's been more difficult than pulling teeth without a pliers trying to get some stop signs in this town. So could we add um, traffic control and calming? I don't have an objection Controls to that. Are considered because Does now- anybody have an objection to any of those changes? Um, I don't have an ob- objection, although I just, I'll just go on the record where like I kind of I don't know. I sort of disagree about traffic, meaning cars, because yeah. we use the word foot traffic all the time or bike traffic. So, you know, I, I, um, I it doesn't bother me that much. Um, and then calming and controls. Um, I thought, yeah, I, it's, I think that's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, maybe I'd suggest school transit and safety issues. Well, not transit. That's like bus and trains. Well, I think it's it's <laughs> getting to there, what, however you get there, right? Um, so traffic. If you just look, it's it's like using the word accident and collision synonymously. Synonymously, they're not the same. And traffic and transportation are not the same. Just like a collision is not necessarily an accident. Okay. So um, we should, you know, I think we should just clean it up. I guess. Um, I'm fine with that. Uh, does anybody have any further comments on those changes? And then we can move on to uh, Vice Chair Martos. Who's been... I did want to toss out oh. a couple of ideas of what to sure. add. One would be like the Chapin Avenue, Avenue improvements. They're going over it now with the trees and the drainage and the water runoff. But Chapin's not up here. So there's that. And then there's that whole area up by the BART station at the north end of Rollins that is being designed and built and planned. So I think that should be on here too, um, that we would be involved in it. So the North Rollins planning project is, there's a separate working group for that. Uh, Members of the public can go, there are public meetings. Uh, They're in very, very early discussion stages of the design, we would, in a future year, that may be, may well be something that that rates very high for this commission. But I, I'd be shocked if there would be anything that would be ripe for TSBC in 2021 for North Rollins. They're just in such an early planning stage. I would urge people to go to the meetings. Uh, I, I'm on that working group for TSBC. I think we appointed a TSBC commissioner um, late last year, and I ended up volunteering to do that. Um, the the Chapin one, uh, I think that might be a good suggestion. I'm just thinking, does that fall under anything we've got? It might not. Um, Through the chair? It may. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. We, we brought that to you, I believe it was last year with Miss. I Lee. recall. And so we will we'll provide it as one of our, when it comes up an update. I don't think we've yeah. had uh, too much more on it lately, uh, but we will bring that one back to you. We did it once, okay. we can do it again. It's in a different phase. I, I seem to recall that there was not a lot of enthusiasm for the existing plan. So I don't even know where it is, if it's how it's progressing. 
through chair, I think there was a lot of input. I think one of the input was the parking trade off. And uh, yeah. I, I think that worked out a little and bicycle facilities on there. I think we decided that it wasn't appropriate to have bicycle facilities on there, but to improve the facility for pedestrians, whether it, it's the wider sidewalks, more sh street trees, something in the middle. But I will, uh, we'll, we'll get back to you on that one. Okay, great. Hmm. Okay. Through the chair? Through yes, the chair? Commissioner Israel. So yes. we, we can make that um, an engineering topic since the engineering yeah. department still has to work. However, just as a little aside, um, if you didn't read the Burlingame e-newsletter today, they're already requesting public input on the Chapin Avenue feasibility study, which kind of surprised me because I would have thought that we would have had more input and more study on this prior to opening it up to everybody. I don't know if anyone else saw that, but I just want to throw that out. I did not. Uh, I can see it. I'll <laughs> put in my feedback. So, yeah, um, going back to number nine, parking and traffic considerations with planning. Um, I've noticed in some of the parking parking lots that we have recently designed, such as the one across from Walgreens at Burlingame Avenue and El Camino. It's, uh, I love the part where it goes down to Molly Stones and we have access to Molly Stones. But when you're walking out of the parking lot heading toward Walgreens, it's extremely dangerous. There's no sidewalk. You're fighting the incoming traffic, motor vehicles, while you're trying to walk out and there's a storm drain there. So how do we get involved in the designing and improvement of the parking garages? The you know, the way they do the new parking lots, you know, they're sometimes really difficult just to walk to your car or, to, or out of your car to the sidewalk or the difficulty of like the Safeway trying to get to the sidewalk or cross the entrance exit of the Safeway on Howard Avenue, that new one. How do we get, is that part of that or how does it work? Is that planning? I, I think some of that's planning. Um, you know, like Safeway is private. So I think that's a planning issue. Uh, I, I think this commission spent a lot of time uh, uh, discussing, at least at a high level, the, the Highland parking garage that's being built right now. Uh, I think when it comes to things like design and things like that, that's really a planning commission remit. You know, we, we give guidance on what we need. Right, we need we need a certain number of spots. Right, we need a certain number of spots. We want them to be long term, short term. This is what we think the demand is. This is how it affects traffic flows. I think when it gets to sort of managing designs, that's really a planning commission thing. Okay, because some of them there's just no way you can safely walk to your car, and in a number of areas that's that have been redone in the last five years, I find them really difficult scary so okay so just that's with planning so i guess that's what that is thank you yeah, yeah. <coughs> all right commissioner martos you've been uh you've been waiting so <laughs> not, a, not, a, not a problem not a problem i like to hear everyone's feedback so looking at the list the green list actually looks a lot more interesting, but I don't know if those are things that we could weigh in on. Most of those are reports from staff that are already underway. Um, looking down the list on the on the right side, the ECR corridor and probably not, Hoover School update, probably not, unless there's an issue up there we need to debate or discuss. Downtown parking strategies, well, we have the garage going in, so that's probably a wait and see and with COVID, not a lot of issues. Uh -huh. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, traffic calming at Floribunda, um, you know, we did have a lot of discussion on that. I, um, uh, I don't think there's anything going on there. Um, the roundabout, not worried about. Oak Grove, Carolyn traffic signal is something I would like to know more about. Um, maybe a, through the chair to Mr. Wong, is there anything that our commission should consider about what's going on in that intersection that um, you might be able to add some suggestions? Through the chair, uh, you know, on this one, 
we've been waiting for a, a meeting with uh, the Caltrain and the uh, PUC, and uh, we'll have that for you. We should have it to you, and I, I'll confirm with Ms. Mai uh, next month. We had that meeting today. So we've kind of got our ducks in a row and we know what we need to do and we'll be able to present to you, you know, what the design looks like and how it's going to, more importantly, how it's going to operate, especially when there's a train coming through. We'll show you the, there's a, I believe when we bring that presentation, it will show you a little simulation of what cars will be moving along there and what happens. So you'll see that and then see how it improves, uh, enhances pedestrian safety there. So you will have that. So as a, uh, a item six, uh, presentation hopefully next month i believe we will have everything ready for that we've been preparing for it so so uh again through <laughs> chair mr wong is that something that we will be able to discuss should that be over on the left side column or is that just a, for in our information topic again uh sorry through the chair i guess the items how we broke it up and i kind of changed it you know yeah. engineering staff these aren't just items that we will provide you an update We'll, we'll obviously have a presentation. You know, staff's already working on these items. The items that were under traffic safety, it's not something that we've, you know, we'll look at, but it's not something that's specifically on our radar. Like right now, at least engineering staff's not talking about electric vehicles other than how it's going into the new parking structure, right? We're not that broad yet. We're focused on some of these. And so by talking about parking, we've talked about the EV charging, just it's things like that. I think that's how we're breaking up. We're specifically, we already have projects on the books that we will provide updates to you on this. And then these were kind of topics that the uh, Traffic Safety and Park Commission through a subcommittee or yeah, just their own research would uh, bring up and we, we could provide support on some of that, but we weren't actively uh, working on something. I, I you know, so I, I think a good way to characterize this is active passive, right? The, what's on the left is active. It's up to us to push. It's up to us to ask the questions and say, we need to know more. We, you know, we need to investigate. We need, this is a priority for us, no matter what the city staff says to us. And, it's important to and, us. It's our job. And what's on the right is passive, which means we know these things are going on. We're going to get reports. We're going to give our opinions. Um, and, but you know, we expect the city staff to be reporting back to us, whether it's an uh, agenda item or an engineering. All right. Okay. Through the through the okay. chair, so. I, I if I can just clarify real quick, I also like to think of it as like that's more like the big conceptual stuff. Yeah. Um, whereas the other list is more hammering out more specific detailed plans. If I don't know if you also are thinking. Okay. Um, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, so I'm thinking Oak Grove Carolyn traffic signal is actually part of school transportation and safety because it is right there at Burlingham High. It directly impacts Burlingham High, which is school. Uh, and, um, I, that's agree with, 2000 I agree with that. So that should be part of the school transportation because it's by far like a huge school intersection um, with 2,000 students there. Um, yeah. So uh, I think it should be part of that also. I, I think it, I agree with that. So let me continue. Um, I, I thought I heard Commissioner Bush advocate for moving Old Bayshore Corridor study over to the left column. And I would advocate for that as well. Um, going down the list on the right. I think I'm uh, school safety improvements. We have a commission for that. You know, the Lion Hogue neighborhood traffic calming, there's going to be some feedback because they're just laying down the temporary lines right now, or they, they put paint down. But they're going to be laying down some temporary traffic circles and speed cushions and other things. So um, I think Ms. Mai told me that they were going to have a community meeting after a certain period of time that the neighborhood has had an opportunity to test out all those traffic calming features and take some feedback. But um, that may be something that we want to consider in the future. But um, well, let's just hold that in the right column for now. Burlingame Point traffic, I'm OK with that. So looking at the left column, um, 
So the bike ped plan implementation, uh, again, that's uh, our, is that something that we're going to discuss and debate and offer suggestions or is that engineering's role to figure out the implementation part of the, the plan? It's through the chair to Mr. Wong, maybe. Uh, through the chair. The implementation obviously will be giving you updates as we're moving along. Uh, we talked about of the projects that we are currently working on that we will be able to show you the implementation, right? I mean, right now, California Drive, the improvements at Burlingame Station are, are noted. As Ms. Beatty pointed out, once we kind of uh, generated um, the next year's budget for bike ped improvements, that's when we can talk about uh, how those are going and what projects ultimately were selected for that. So does right. that explain the question about implementation? I think it, it's both giving you an update. I don't, not sure unless it's a grant opportunity, we'll be discussing what we want to take off the bike ped plan and, and put it on there. But obviously the commission, if when we're no different than the BPAC, you know, as far as which projects that you see off that list found in the bike ped master plan, where they go, if you feel strongly about it, just, yeah, bring that to everyone's attention as, uh, as the group. Right. So it's, um, so I, it's my opinion that number two should maybe be in the engineering staff report to us or in, reported by staff. And I think that's it. Downtown parking and Broadway parking. So we've got both of those. Okay. So that, those are all, those are the suggestions I have. Okay. Um, I guess I, I guess it's my turn. Uh, I agree with the adding Old Bay Shore. Um, I mean, I, I I think I agree. I'm just looking through. I think this is a good list. Um, I'm doing the same thing Commissioner Martos did, just doing a quick scan on the right side. Um, but I think. Uh, I'm just thinking the ECR corridor project is, is going to be a, a tremendous deal. It's going to be really a big deal. And I'm, I wonder if that's something we should be somehow providing some extra attention to, uh, rather than just passively kind of waiting to hear the news. So I, I guess as I think about it, maybe that one should move over. Uh, I say that with some humility, because I don't know what we can do. <laughs> I don't know how much we can do, uh, but I do think we should be watching it pretty carefully, uh, even if it's just to be up to date on what's happening. Um, and I'm just thinking about if there's anything else on here that falls into that um, bucket. Potentially rec center parking could be a big issue. I don't know, how close are we to being done with the rec center? Is it planned and done? Is there anything for us to do? I know they're in the middle of the build. Do we have parking lot design settled for that already? Through the chair, yes, they have a design for the parking lot. Um, we can, I can try to get a hold of those and you, you can take yeah. a look at it's it's okay yeah so then i then that's probably where it should be um yeah uh okay and what about the Pen san mateo peninsula overpass i guess that that's also something where we we're just kind of playing wait and see Through chair, I believe they're going to have uh, they're they should be having a public meeting at some point, but we can give you an update on that as yeah. well. Yeah. Um. Well, with that, I think I think we've got the right list, and you know, I think just in terms of the color coding here, uh, Mr. Wong, you didn't have a chance. Yeah, I think that I think the yellow stuff 
that was there nine and 10. I mean, that's just process stuff. That's not something we would be moving up and down the list. Halloween, we've already moved to the right. Uh, trial quick builds, I think is a good ad. I, I think we had agreed McKinley school is, yeah, it's going to be nested under tr school transportation as will uh, Oak Grove. Uh, and I agree that those are two those are good place to start. If we're going to say school school transportation and safety is important, I think uh, those are two good issues to start with. Um, so through the chair, um, can I? Yeah, through the chair. Also after you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so one thing that I suggested was that number two moved to the engineer's side as a, a report. Oh, by pen implementation. implementation. Yeah, since it's implementation, I still want to know what's going on but I don't think we have a lot of discussion on the implementation side of that. I'm right. sorry, I, 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 I was- I it here through the chair. It is uh, item seven on our side. Got it. What you're talking about, Commissioner Martos? Isn't there, Got it. Okay. isn't there still going to be though, a lot of, I mean, we heard it from BPAC already. I mean, there's still gonna be a lot of discussion on how to prioritize projects. And this is actually, the one other one on the right side that I was noodling with moving over to the left, they're closely related is grant opportunities. Um, you know, this is obviously a perennial pain point for us is, is being able to give good input, good input on the grant opportunities in a timely manner. I think we've gotten better at it, um, but maybe not as good as we'd like. Um, I think we'll be able to operate a little differently. And this is where we just had the discussion about having the special meetings. Yeah. Maybe as those ground, because those sometimes those windows aren't, they don't fall within our, our scheduling for our meetings, but maybe we have a special one to discuss how you guys would like to pick which projects you want to pick off the bike ped master plan and apply for. Right? Maybe, maybe the, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Warren, I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off. I, uh, maybe the grant, to me, the grant opportunities usually end up going part and parcel with the bike ped stuff. Um, maybe until the opportunities are in front of us and we have to be reactive, there's not too much we can do. But one thing we can do is, I think it comes down to bike ped plan prioritization. And I do think that's something that still belongs on the left side of this list. I, I, I think it's I think it's actually quite important for traf for our commission to play a role in helping the city figure out how to prioritize what's on that bike ped master plan. Because it's not going to all happen at once and we're going to have to pick and choose where we start. And I think that's actually really important for us. If I may, Mr. Chair? I think um, I think Commissioner Isla had asked to speak oh before, Sorry. so I want to give her her turn yeah. first. Well, actually, um, Vice Chair Mardos sort of covered it, but um, I but I was going to say, why don't we have on the left list have bike ped plan prioritization and on the right list, bike ped plan implementation. And that that then we can sort of advocate for what we think needs to be addressed and is more most important, but the actual implementation and that more detailed strategy falls on the shoulders of the staff, the engineers. Uh, I, I think that's, I think that I agree with that. Uh, Commissioner Lee, you want to speak? Um, yes. Uh, I was just at the bike pad meeting, you know, prior to Teaspoon and they're working on prioritization now and to Chairwoman Israelette's comments one of our top things is the McKinley School Crossing in El Camino. And then the other was a lot of the El Camino Real ability to cross the street safely and in frequency so that it is in like six blocks before you can cross again safely. Um, so a lot of it is covering that. So they'll, they'll come up with a list of their prior prioritization um, because this year and probably next year are going to be pretty lean on the holders. So they'll be submitting that and telling you about it probably just next meeting. So they'll have their list and I have spent a lot of time working on it. And uh, probably at least a quarter of it is school improvements. And 
and we're hoping we can do something with that El Camino with McKinley. We think the part of it is not in Caltrans's jurisdiction and we could do something there for part of it. Okay. Um, well, I, thank you, Commissioner Lee. Yeah, uh, that's, my that's only helpful. thing as a novice that I didn't, don't know is the ranking. Because yeah, so that we're going to get to that part. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's we do this, and then this is we're, we haven't gotten to the actual Nowarowski method yet, right? But we're we're coming up to that right now. Uh, point, of I think. point of information. Sure. Um, on the plan priorities, I know BPAC is working very diligently on on that. And how are we going to? Uh, complement or not undo some of the priorities that they come up with. And if they're already studying this very thoroughly, um, it could come to our commission as an information item. And we have a 6A for the BPAC every month, but I don't know that we need to discuss and debate if the BPAC's already doing that. Well, we don't, uh, I, I, I think we have to be a part of the discussion, right? I, I don't want to let them decide and you know, just passively say yay or nay, you know, I think we have to, I think we should be tightly coordinated with them to, to your point, Commissioner, Vice Chair Martos, we should not uh, be working independently uh, without any coordination, but I, I do think we should be active and not passive in, in that process. Which means as they do their work, there might be, we will want to have, A, we'll have a B2 members on the BPAC, uh, one for the time being, but hopefully up to two at some point. Uh, and uh, we will, you know, if, if it's a priority for us, and I think it absolutely should be, you know, we may put it on our agenda in discussion with the BPAC, you know, say, okay, what do you guys see? Put it on our agenda, hear from the BPAC where they say, see the priorities are. There might be subsets in there, right? Different parts of the city. Uh, different aspects, whether it's pedestrian, bike, or or, or road facility issues. Uh, I don't have the full answer for you, but I think the 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 tonight answer is I would say we should make a priority of having space on our agenda to engage with them about it. I I mean through the chair I I think it's it's our our do our responsibility I think as a, as the teaspoon com commission that we shouldn't that we we do have to make our own decisions and evaluations yeah I agree okay um, if there's no other comments we can get to the part where we start moving stuff around. Let me just, uh, Mr. Wong, I just wanna, if we could get maybe this list a little cleaner. Um, yeah. I think we had agreed McKinley School Crossing was not gonna be its own priority. And we can probably, just so we have a good sense of how much we have on there, we can take bike ped plan implementation off now that we have priorities on. Um, Cause I wanna make sure the list is, how long is this list now? Could I make another suggestion? We're up to 13. Yes, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Israel. I'm not super thrilled about having trial quick bids, builds uh, as um, uh, an item, because to me, any quick build is going to be as a part of a solution to a specific problem that we're looking at. So I'm not I mean, we're not going to sit around and say, let's try this, let's try that. We're going to do it in the framework of an issue that we're studying. So I, I like, I think it's kind of weird that it's a separate item. I, I would strike that and just that's part of whatever we do for all yeah. these other issues. And I would note, I was nervous we had 13 items, but I, we still have these two process items on there, uh, Mr. Wong. So we can take parking and joint meeting with city council and kind of move that down to the bottom because we, we don't need to spend time ranking those. You can make those yellow again, I guess. Sorry, uh, Broadway parking? No. Uh, um, parking uh, with parking. consideration of planning. Yeah, right. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, if I could just speak in defense of the um, the trial, uh, the trial and quick build, I think it's more around like how do we want to like sort of uh, develop like what is our toolkit and like how do we want to sort of like uh, how do we like so it's not like specific projects that we want to do trials and quick builds on, but like like how can we use how can we use them and sort of like talking about it more from a meta. Uh, level, I I hear you that like you know the actual implementation is going to be in the context of like a specific project. Um, Commissioner Bush, I, I, let me. I think I can be a little helpful here. I, I'm personally I'm on the fence about this, but I think what would help one way or another is if you could give a couple examples. I think in the abstract, I'm struggling with it myself, but if you could give a couple of examples of how. Because I can sort of, sort of I, imagine. I, uh, well, I, I had directed the question to Commissioner Bush, so I want to give him a chance to answer, if you don't mind. Uh, so, sure. so like, so this would, so like, and, and maybe, maybe it possibly like moves more over to the engineering um, staff, like to the passive level. But it's like, okay, here, here are some things that people, uh, people have done as like trial quick builds in like other jurisdictions, um, like, you know, um, you know, in New York, they have like parking days where like, they like, um, they like give, uh, they let people go and use the parking spaces for a day to like sort of put out installations or like, um, you know, they, um, they, they will have like a demonstrate, like a demonstration day where they show like, this is, this is what, like it would look like to have like a um, a car like car protected bike lane, um, and so it, it's more like these are like sort of exhibitions. It, you can you can almost sort of do it as like exhibitions of like things that we could possibly do um, to just sort of sh show and like get people comfortable with concepts that might be like implemented in other in other areas. Yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out in my head how to articulate this in a way that it, I could easily explain. Because <laughs> um, I, I think I, saw, I, I understand where you're going with it and I, and I, I think it has some merit. Um, but I, 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 which is I think to, um, I mean, really it's like long-term thinking about different, uh, I'm struggling for the words, uh, long-term experimentation and long-term thinking with different modes of transportation, uh, and, you know, where to your point, we, we do things like the, the example you gave earlier was uh, when we shut down the um, Carolyn in front of the high school, right? Um, but, If well, I may, Chair? Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner. So my idea when Chris, Commissioner Bush just brought this up was a quick, it'd be quick build improvements, which to me are low hanging fruit items. Um, maybe that isn't what you meant, but that's how I interpreted it. So I'm thinking it could be part of that we would review or look at the city paving list of what streets are being repaved. Um, and so when streets are being repaved and you can, you get those lists more than a year in advance, when they're being repaved, they could be striped for bikes. They could be striped with high um, visibility crosswalks. They could be striped with lane lines that make the lanes narrower. And uh, they can be striped with center pedestrian refuges. They, so it would be looking, we could tie it to the paving projects and look at what improvements and changes could be done while we happen to be there repaving the roadway anyway. That's, I that's what I had understood. I think, I think these sound like two different ideas to me, but I think if I could tie it back, all the feedback we've ever been given in these broader areas from the city council is stick to the priorities, stick to the priorities, stick to the master planning uh, and let the, you know, and let the city 
come up with the designs and we can look at them and I like to look at them. Uh, but, but I think in terms of where we're proactive, the emphasis is always on stick to the priority setting. So, you know, we weren't there when you made the suggestion when we started Commissioner Bush, but we ended up there when we, when we reframed bike ped as uh, bike ped plan priorities. I think, I think we can probably address some of what you're talking about there, which is, you know, we think it would be better if we had more areas where we just shut off the traffic entirely and we could experiment with that and, and look at it as a priority for the future. So it may be that we can try and address what you're talking about under that larger heading. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and similarly, we can, under that larger heading as repaving comes along, we can look at that and say, hey, is this what are, is what we're doing with the repaving aligning with the bike ped priorities that, that we've uh, emphasized? So I think we can kind of get at both of those ideas under that larger um, headline. Okay, uh, before, I don't want to go too much. I think we got to get to the Noel Roski method. So um, I think this is a good, we've got 10. It's a nice round number. It's a good list. Um, so Commissioner Lee, I'll, I'll do you a favor here. You'll go last just so you can see the first four uh, happen, uh, but it's going to go in the round. So don't worry, you'll get plenty of turns. And basically you can keep going. You'll see, you just, if you disagree with anything, we can keep going. Um, but Every year we've we've managed to bring it to closure. So uh, I will. I made Commissioner Lee last. I'll go second to last. Uh, Vice Chair Martos, since you're Vice Chair, you have to go third to last. So that means, well, Commissioner Bush, since you're leaving us, I'll make you first. Uh, so you can go first. Then we'll go Israel it, uh, Martos, myself, and then Commissioner Lee. Uh, and no one's going to miss out because we got to keep going until everyone's happy. So. Uh, Commissioner Bush, so the way it's going to work to remind everybody is you pick one item and you can put it anywhere, one to ten. That's all you get to do until it comes back around to you. And you can move things, although if you go first, you can't move anything. Um, but for your turn, you can move someone else's mo uh, choice if you like. Um, I'll move bike pad plan priorities to um, um, to number two um and i'm putting it above school transportation and safety because we've already done a lot in those areas so like i think that one moves down a priority okay and uh commissioner Israelit, uh it goes to you um oh I didn't see bike share feedback is still on our. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Wasn't that supposed to be on the engineer side? Yeah. We were going to no, investigate we, I, to see. Yeah. If anyone's okay. even doing. I, I, I won't. I won't take your pick away. Yeah, Andy, you can uh, yank that. that to yeah, the, I right. see correction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and wasn't sorry. I thought. Um, that also electric vehicle discussion with planning was supposed to be, wasn't that also supposed to be a yellow down at the bottom? No, we had a general meeting with planning that is there in yellow at the bottom. Electric vehicles, a specific topic. It's so, going to be so, okay. So we're going to keep okay. that one. And we're, we're, okay. we're, good. we're in a good place. Nine is a nice okay. low number. Yeah, so, this is awesome. Yeah. Okay, I would like to, um, I'd like to move Cal Caltrans ECR corridor up um, to maybe number three. And the reason is that if we don't advocate for what our city wants this year, we are going to lose our voice in helping um, decide our main, one of our main thor thoroughfares. And I know we feel somewhat powerless uh, dealing with Caltrans, but I think that we aren't, and I think that if we, you know, draft things and, and put things in writing, that perhaps it's worth a try. I, I appreciate that sentiment. Uh, I'll say that out of turn. Okay, so uh, that takes us to Vice Chair Martos. 
I'd like to move number nine to position six. Okay. Um, I'm going to do something controversial <laughs> and, and in our, in the history of our commission, fairly unprecedented. Um, I am going to take downtown parking and access and move it down. Uh, this is a COVID play. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is an expression of my pessimism about when we're going to get back to normal life. Uh, so I'm going to move downtown parking uh, below school transportation. So it would be the new number four. Everything else will move up one on the list. Um, and, you know, I'll say I'm sure we will get back to a world where it belongs higher up, but we've done great work building this new parking garage. And uh, I, I would just say, I think there's a lot to do, um, but, uh, and we may, you know, we've already started having meetings about town square, which I, I neglected to mention when we were putting priorities on here, but uh, there will be a lot to do. I think we'll get back to normal life. If we want to do a town square, we might be very constrained again. Uh, but I, I think this year we're, we're sort of paralyzed. I hate to say that that's uninspiring, but this year I, we're not in a great position to make good decisions. We don't have any, good data on what's going to happen. Um, and so I think it's on our list. I'm not put moving it off or moving it to the bottom, but I think these other things might be more important to work on this year. So. Okay. Commissioner Lee. Well, thank you. Um, I would like to swap two and three. I feel that uh, with school transportation, we have a lot more control over it. And I really feel we could do a lot with low hanging fruit and get a lot done in this one year um, and put Caltrans as number three, just to swap the two and to go with how um, commissioners Chairman's suggestion, downtown parking, I feel this year, again, is going to be so we have a brand new parking garage and we're going to have very few issues with parking this year. So I think for this year, I would like to move. Um, oh, you get you only get one, Commissioner no, Lee. So you, you got your one, but don't worry. Okay. It doesn't end until everyone's happy. So it'll come back to you. All right. uh, Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, so that means it's back to Commissioner Bush. Did we skip the Commissioner Martos or Vice Chair Martos? Did, did we skip Vice Chair Martos? No. No. Okay. okay. Sorry. You oh. had me nervous there, Commissioner. Sorry, I, I just had a, like a temporary laugh. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, 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 I think that we should move up electric vehicle discussion discussion um, to number six. Okay. Um. I like that suggestion, but it's not my turn. So uh, we go from, good choice, Commissioner Bush. Okay, so we go to Commissioner Israel. Oh, this is getting a little tough. Hey, by the way, does anyone, it just struck me this year that this reminds me a lot of a Yankee swap Christmas gift thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, with that thought, um, Well, we're, we were talking about Old Bayshore Corridor study and like wanting to have some sort of better park access and it's still at the bottom, still near the bottom. Um, so I think I would switch that with downtown, move that up and downtown 
like for number number five or even number four actually because I think we just didn't we say that downtown parking and access is really not something we need to sweat at this point so I would move downtown parking access where the Bayshore corridor is at, to number eight and vice versa switch those two I, okay, I guess I'll, I, I'll get to say my piece soon enough. I, uh, Commissioner Martos or Vice Chair Martos. I'll let this settle. All right, you saved it. Okay, so let's see. I'd like to swap number three and number five in order. Things might get interesting here. I think we're, we're starting to see a divergence of views. Uh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, so I'll say one thing, it's not gonna be my choice. I, I, I do, I stand by what I did with downtown parking. I do wonder at some point, we're gonna have to come back and deal with all the parklets that are out there and whether they're going in or coming out. Uh, that might be something that's more reactive, but uh, I, I kind of worry about us pushing downtown parking all the way to the bottom, but it may not have any, it's not where I'm gonna go. I, I, I think, I, I, I'm gonna move ECR back up one. So I would switch it with Old Bay, sure. I'll make that my, move for now i think i think it's tough uh i liked what commissioner israel had said it's so important uh and we can have an impact that you know and we we've had an impact before on ecr notwithstanding the fact that we weren't supposed to so uh i i i'm gonna move it up one as an expression of optimism for that um and I'm a little worried now about downtown parking, but it's not my move. So uh, who's up next? Commissioner, Commissioner Lee. Lee. Yes, so I would like to move Broadway parking up. I would like to make it number six and push everybody else down. And I think it's neglected and uh, Broadway needs help. It's gonna be a rough time for Broadway, especially with all that's occurred. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that brings us back to Commissioner Bush. I actually think I like this. So I'm going to, I'm going to pass. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Israel. You guys are going to hate me. Um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know if I agree with this list yet either. So go ahead. How about it? I, I, you know, again, be, just knowing, having followed it and knowing the pace um, of what's going on with El Camino, I feel like this year is, is the year that we have to say something. So I would like to move that up again. Um, I think I would move that up to number three. And then I, after that, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the okay. way the list stands. So, I'm sorry, swap three and four, correct? Yes, please. Okay, uh, I'm not up. Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair Martos is up. Well, let's see. I'm good with this list. Okay. I I think I've got like two moves left in me, just warning everybody. So I, I'm gonna move um, electric vehicle up. Uh, at least above Broadway parking in the spirit of making, getting to a consensus faster. I think I'll just move it up above uh broadway parking for now um 
I think that's probably, for me, Bayshore and electric vehicle at five and six is a good one. It's a good tie for in my mind. Uh, I got one more, but I'll, I, not my turn. Commissioner Lee. I'm fine right now. Thank you. Commissioner Bush. I'm still fine. Vice Chair Martos. Yep. Chair Israel. Oh, Wait. I'm sorry. So sorry. So sorry. Wait. So sorry. And, and that's okay. But I've I've been called chair twice during this meeting, and it's pretty funny to say, "Oh, oh. no, I'm not anymore." <laughs> um, sorry, it rolls off the I, No, no, I, no, no problem at all. I, if you if I keep going like this, it's because I'm looking at the list beside me because I keep forgetting. Um, I'm actually happy with this list, mm -hmm. but I'm worried about what Chair Wetton is going to do. <laughs> Well, it's so funny because I started things off. My first move is to take downtown parking off of number one and move it down. And now the last thing I said I had is I, I don't think we should have downtown parking down at number eight. Uh, I think there are going to be issues with parklets. Uh, and I think um, I don't think it's our highest priority this year. Uh, I, I think it needs to go higher. Right. So and I think chair, um, I, I don't. Uh, Vice Chair Martos. We did oh, did I skip? Oh, geez. you did. Yes, oh, you did. Thank you yeah. for stopping me. Well, mm -hmm. you, you heard, you got this preview of how I felt about it, but you can <laughs> then act accordingly. So I, I won't right. steal your thunder. I'll, I'll wait to see where you're going to move it. So I'll, I'll pass. Uh, okay. Um, we'll, we'll, why don't you, we'll just flip turns because I skipped you. Um, okay. I think downtown parking. I think we should move it above. Um, I'm just trying to decide how high we should take it. Um, I think we should make it the new number five. Nope. Let's make it the new number six. I'm still good. So we'll, I, I, I promised Commissioner Martos he'd, he'd get Perfect. another bite of the apple. I'm good. Commissioner Lee? You skipped me again. Did I skip? No. no, I don't think I did. I, <laughs> not this time. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Sorry. I got it. <laughs> That's okay. Commissioner <laughs> Lee? I'd like to put electric vehicle discussion and planning uh, last. All right. Uh, who's next? Commissioner Bush? Um, I think that I'm going to have to respectfully disagree um, on that one. Um, I guess my compromise is to move it to number eight. Uh, okay. Uh, Commissioner Israel, it is your turn. Okay. I, you have noticed that I always want to turn, haven't you? Um, sorry about that. Um, okay. I don't want to drag this on forever because really we're gonna address all of these things, right? It's just, you know, prioritizing. But I do have to say that I do think electric vehicle discussion should go in spot number six and six and seven should each drop down one. And the reason is that while we talk about parking, we, we really don't, we're really not able to deal with either of those issues in this current climate. Things are changing in so much flux that we just need to wait until we see in six months or whatever, what's going to happen with parklets and, you know, are yeah. people vaccinated and open? I mean, it, I understand the importance of it, but in actuality, we aren't really going to, in my opinion, be able to address things for quite some time. So, and then I'm good with the list. Uh, Vice Chair Martos. 
I'm good with the list. Yeah, so let me say I'm glad that electric vehicles made its way back up. I, I, I think that, you know, I think an important function for us is to future-proof things. Uh, and there's nothing more future than have people driving electric vehicles. And I think we have to be super thoughtful about that change coming up. Um, and I, I, conversely, I would say about Broadway parking, everything that we've said about downtown parking is equally true about Broadway parking. I, I, we are working on painfully little data. I really strongly agree that Broadway, and I, we, you know, I've always advocated that we pay extra dedicated attention to Broadway. We have a Broadway subcommittee um, from the last time I was chair or two times ago when I was chair for that reason. And I know Commissioner Bush has been on that committee and Commissioner Israel has been on that committee. Um, so I, I think I, I care a lot about Broadway, but it, it's the same problem with downtown. It's like, what are we supposed to do when we don't have uh, any idea what it's going to look like? Um, So that was a lot, a lot, that was a long speech. I think I'm, I'll leave it. I think, uh, I don't think I'll make any moves here. Uh, Commissioner Lee. I'm fine with as is. Okay. All right. Anybody have any last licks? Speak now or forever hold your peace. In case of Commissioner Bush, that's literally true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I think we've got our list. I think this is good. It works somehow every year. It works. So thank you, everybody. Okay, so perfectly time to then roll into uh, subcommittee selections, which is a little tricky because we're we're going to be down one commissioner. Um, so uh, we're the we'll chair. Do you want to postpone this until we find out, or? We could do that. Um, just, and we have just, people, maybe, you know what? Can we do this? Can we just review who's on what committee right now? And, and obviously there's only three of us <laughs> who sure. have been on a committee and will continue to be on a committee. So we, but, but at least it'd be helpful to me to remember. I know that Vice Chair Martos and myself are the downtown parking committee. Uh, Chair Israelit, is it you who's and me on school Reed? traffic? You go to um, page I'm, three. What's if that? All, if you go to page three on your agenda, oh. under item eight, there the current uh, subcommittees are listed there. I'm on school and Broadway, mm -hmm. and I like both of those. Okay, and I'm I'm on school with you, right? Correct. Yes. Sorry, I'm just trying. I'm slow in getting to the page. Um, okay. Well, I mean, it seems like we've got if everyone's of the three of us, if we're happy with the committees we're on, we can step back and maybe um, punt. Uh, I don't know, do we, wanna, do we wanna talk about, maybe it would be worthwhile talking about what committees we wanna continue to have. Um, Commissioner is what wants to continue with Broadway. So presumably, and I, I guess, so uh, Mr. Wong, actually, why don't we, we may have to revisit this when we get a new commissioner, but I think we can talk a little bit about it. I think we have some information here. So um, shouldn't we, um, sh through the chair, shouldn't we also get Commissioner Lee signed up? Yeah, for that's what I was, so getting, can, that, that I was getting to, which is- We don't want her to get bored yeah. or lonely or- <laughs> Correct. So I, I think the fr I think what I would do for starters, we know there will be a Broadway parking subcommittee I mean, Commissioner Lee, it sounds like you're interested in Broadway. So do you want to take Commissioner Bush's space on that committee? Uh, and then we can step back and think about what the other committees look like. The, the one that's not on this list is BPAC. We always have two BPAC commissioners. So we have to think about who will I'm be a BPAC, BPAC commissioner. Right, right. So, um, so do, would you like to be on the Broadway subcommittee? So define, does that include the... Um... Caltrans overpass underpass? Because not I'm really. Yeah. The chair, do you mean the grade separation? Yes, sorry, grade separation. 
no, we, we do not have currently have a subcommittee for that. It's just specifically parking related on Broadway. Yeah. Parking and, and traffic, you know, and, and for instance, yeah. when they do do the overpass, the grade separation, we, that subcommittee may be the one who helps figure out best way to mitigate the impact of that, et cetera. What subcommittees are there? Is it so, one for each of those topics? Sure. Right, so there's, here. Go, go ahead, Mr. Wall. Okay, downtown parking, Commissioner Martos, or Vice Chair Martos and Chair Wetton are currently on that. Broadway parking, which is uh, formerly uh, Commissioner Bush and Commissioner Israelite. Uh, school traffic, Commissioner Israelite and Chair Wetton. And last one is citywide transportation alternatives. For, we used to have Commissioner Wander, right. but that's the only one that's only got uh, Chair Wetton on it now. Yeah, and that's, that's for, um, you know, the city council continues to be interested in you know, options around transit for the city. So shuttles, um, possibly ride sharing as, as, you know, that's not a well-developed idea yet, but it's, it's something that I think people will consider. Um, that obviously went on a long pause this year, uh, but I, it's not going away. I know that we have several members of the city council who can, including mayor, who continue to be interested in that idea. Um, so I, by the way, will probably try and get off that committee because I'm on two and I think that's enough. <laughs> so, um, so that would be another option. Okay, so would that include um, the shuttles for the Facebook area and the 300 Burlingame Point area? Um, that kind of Those thing? Those are private. So those are private. I mean, it's, it's always helped to take into account what the private entities are doing, but those are private. We don't have any. The city has no planning on that. No, uh, well, we did, the, go no, ahead, Mr. That's through commute.org, they run those shuttles. Oh, okay. All right, I think just leave me on BPAC and let's see what the other commissioner wants to do or does. Okay, all right, we can, we can hold it there. That's fine. Um, Okay, um, so I guess we can move on to the next agenda item, which is engineers engineering reports. reports. Yeah, seven A. Actually, you've gone through some of them already. We've uh, first item was uh, the line. Oh, sorry. Uh, Broadway Burlingame Parklet update. All of you know that outdoor dining has been, has, uh, been postponed or in hi hiatus right now until the county moves down to the next level. So we'll, uh, the latest on that is we're working with Broadway. So once uh, it, it's uh, reinstated, we should be able to hit the ground running with some of the Broadway businesses that uh, just as we were starting this, this uh, the new order came in place. Uh, as Commissioner Martos pointed out, Lion Hope traffic calming update. Uh, we've the contractor's been striping out there. We have uh, high visibility crosswalks out there. We have our third traffic circle slash roundabout at Dwight and um, sorry, the the cross street escapes me, but over it over there. Uh, and uh, we've got we widen up the. Uh, bike lane there on Howard. So you can drive it. There's some of those improvements that they're, they're in and they're continuing to work this week and they'll be working next week as well. The uh, California Drive a bike facility um, RFP as Ms. Mai, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, it might have, if she pointed out, it will be, uh, we'll have our, uh, receive those RFPs tomorrow and we'll review them and select the firm to assist in the final design for the, uh, California Drive, as well as the Broadway station. We're looking for two different, or not necessarily two different firms, but there'll be two different contracts. So we could have the same firm and we could have different firms on those. So we're looking at uh, someone to do, take us to final design. As you know, we have the, we're ahead of the game. We have the construction funds to implement those as soon as we're ready. So we're in good shape on those. The federal resurfacing project update, uh, it's significantly done. So the next one we'll be bringing back to you is uh, our cities resurfacing project, which doesn't involve federal funds. So 
you'll be seeing that. And the priority list, we will be updating that based on uh, tonight's discussion. So for yeah. the engineer's report, that's it. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, go ahead, Vice Chair. Through the Chair. Uh, you said two traffic circles, one's on Dwight and Vernon. Where's the other one? Do you know Sorry. off the top of your head? It was, uh, there are other traffic circles along there on on uh, Howard, but what I was in, in yeah. implementing or in indicating is that we have now the roundabout as well as the Larks Bruin did. So we, we have them in place, but yes, there are oh, other okay. traffic circles as part of the project. Okay, yeah, it's Howard and Vernon, or sorry, Dwight and Vernon, Dwight. I, I think is what you're referring to. Yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, no problem. And uh, through the chair, um, the other yes. two smaller ones are at um, Howard and Bancroft and uh, Bloomfield and Bancroft. Much, much smaller compared to the Dwight Vernon one. If I also through the chair. Please. I believe there's one at Plymouth and Bloom Plymouth Way and Bloomfield Road, which I believe would qualify as a school crosswalk and a school crossing for Burlingham High School students. It's on the same piece of land as Burlingham High. So I bike through there and I'm not a brave biker. I bike through there and if a motor vehicle were going around that traffic circle, east or westbound, at uh, on Bloomfield Road, I don't feel there's room for a bike and a motor vehicle to share the lane safely. Um, there isn't enough room, it's not wide enough. So I'm not at all happy with that traffic circle being there. I, I really think it should be a four way stop. Um, and it's really bad for bikes, bikes going through there. When if it's the same size as the circle I'm seeing, the effect is going to be bikes being squeezed against the parked cars if that, if they were to be at the same time at the same place. And that's a school crossing. So uh, through the chair, the um, circle that was proposed at Bluefield and Plymouth, um, when we did the layout, um, the kind of like the white chalk of the uh, limits of the circle, we too feel that um, the, you know, Plymouth itself is narrow and to have a circle there does kind of squeeze the, uh, you know, even the, the vehicle is getting by. So um, we have, we're going to, um, we have eliminated the circles. We are keeping the flares to, um, force drivers to make a slight movement and that's that's kind of key to slowing them down. Um, the circle itself has been eliminated. Thank you, that's very nice to hear. Would it be a possibility to put in some crosswalks there with, um, with those flash down signs that on those triangles that say you know, state law requires you yield to pedestrians in this crosswalk. Would that be a possibility there to across um, Bloomfield Road? If I recall when we were doing the Lion Hoag study, I believe 86% of the motor vehicles were going higher than the speed limit through that intersection. So it'd be nice to have some help for the pedestrians to cross. There's no traffic control for half a mile all the way up to Burlingame Avenue from the freeway. That's at least half a mile and, and not just calming but control and that's a school crossing as i mentioned and through the chair uh again this we can uh we can try to look at this at another meeting but it's something we can look at if not in this phase in the future phase because this this is only phase one these are the quick builds so we'll see how all this if what works right this is us to see what we're going to go back and revisit work with the community or community or have meetings with the community see how things work and then uh, we'll, we can revisit this. So uh, <laughs> through the chair, one more thing for Mr. Wong on Lion Ho. So at the uh, intersection of Victoria and Howard, they red curved three of the four red curves. The fourth one already had red paint but the paint is so old, it almost looks brown. And uh, 
I was wondering if uh, you could just put in the work order since they're out there to refresh that fourth corner. It's on the northeast corner of Victoria and Howard. Sure, absolutely. We'll we'll take a look at that. I yeah, I imagine they might have missed that too because I thought we did want to refresh everything that was out there because it makes sense. Everything else pops. Why not make that one corner pop? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't pop, and the other yeah. three pop. Um, and that's a critical corner as well. It's, it's hard to see right. when you're going through that intersection. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, should we proceed to the next agenda item? Are we there yet? Are there any other questions on the engineering report? Okay. Um, well, farmer's market. Actually, I guess we can, I would like to talk at some point about getting us back to the farmer's market. This might not be the night for it uh, or the season for it. Uh, perhaps when we get a new commissioner, it's something we can explore, uh, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, I think it was a good, for those, Commissioner Vice Chair Martos is a regular participant. Uh, I think it was a really helpful thing for us to do uh, and by the way, we still have farmer's market, so it's uh, worth thinking about having a plan now that uh, Commissioner Launder is no longer uh, leading the charge on that. Uh, okay, so uh, item 7D, uh, TSPC Chair and Commissioner's Communications. So this is if you've got input from the public you'd like to share. Uh, I see Commissioner Israelit's hand being raised, yes. so I'm going to go to her. Go to her first. Um, okay. Ooh, my AirPods are dying. Um, okay. I have, well, two, two um, comments, just so you're aware. The one was the Chapin Drive or Chapin Block being sorry. open to public discussion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Commissioner Zerla, through the chair. Uh, I believe you forgot the uh, uh, Sergeant Perna, who's been with us all night. Oh. We, oh, we went right over it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so we will come back to that, Commissioner Zulit. I'm very interested, but you're right. Uh, Sergeant Parna, uh, item 7B. Sorry, sorry to do that. I, I must be rusty in my chair skills because I've done it a couple times tonight, so <laughs> forgive me. There we go, unmuted. Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm pulling up the um, the... Since the pasta state um, report right now, I'm just trying to, I just downloaded it again. I'm trying to pull it up, but are there any uh, that, that you'd like to discuss on the, uh, while I'm pulling this up, are there any of the accidents that you guys see of note? Do you want any more information on? You know, um, I note that there's not one accident, but three accidents uh, coming into, it looks like it's, people were just hitting parked motor vehicles on Paloma and Cappuccino. So that was is a DUI driver, I believe. That was like one in, so what happens is when a DUI driver hits multiple vehicles, um, those are separate collisions, unless it's, uh, um, unless it's like, unless you could prove that the vehicle is like out of control in one continuous motion. Got it. So yeah. this is one DUI who hit three of vehicles, managed to do it on Paloma and Cappuccino, or was it all on Broadway and they were just ping pong? I think up the street? It, if I remember correctly, it actually spanned um, like a few blocks. So today okay. is... What happened to it? I, I just put it in my downloads. I'm trying to find it right now. Sorry about okay. that. Let's see. So I'm trying to find it from our agenda as well. Let's go back here. Um, so are there, um, there was one of note on there, I believe there was one um, that was highlighted, it was a major accident. Um, can someone give me that case number and I could just talk about that while I'm looking for the other thing? Yeah, I'm happy to do that, uh, Sergeant Perno. So it's BRM200, it's really testing my eyesight, 2003569. Thank you. For that. And that was on December 11th. And that does seem like the best one to uh, look at. Yeah, so this collision was at um, Cal. Uh, let's see where I go with this. 
California and Bromagee map? Yeah, so this, uh, I'm trying to find the, the summary. Yeah, so this was at California Drive and Burlingham Avenue. Um, I believe this was a well, pretty heavily dark and rainy night. Um, the driver uh, just uh, hit the pedestrian that was in the crosswalk, I believe, but just flat out just didn't see uh, the pedestrian due to lighting. And um, I mean, it was the driver's, definitely the driver's error. Um, but because the, the driver was in the crosswalk. Um, that's one, two, uh, this was a pretty serious collision. The, the, um, patients, the, the pedestrians, um, are expected to recover from their injuries, but it was, uh, a, a pretty serious head injury from what I'm at, from what I remember. How is, how is the lighting deficient there? I mean, that's, that's, I mean, there is a decent amount of lighting at that intersection. So I'm surprised. I think it was just because the pedestrians, the, the driver had noted that they were wearing dark clothing and, you know, just the weather conditions. Okay. So, I mean, it wasn't, you know, it was, fly, it was plainly the driver's fault, but the, it was uh, the only other thing that, you know, when listening to you guys discuss all this, I don't know if that, if that crosswalk, it is a major crosswalk and I don't know if it has the light up beacons. Um, you know, that might be something to explore in the future. And this is, all, I don't know if I'm supposed to even make suggestions like that, but um, that might be a, a no. good one. No, it's helpful. Uh, all input's good. I, I would, it's probably a good place to note, and I know you're working on it. So uh, <laughs> I'll note that you're working on it, which is we were going to try and get together a hot map, right? So yeah. I, so I actually did submit something to uh, Mr. Wong. Um, I think it was a little too busy. We try, we're trying to figure out how to um, revise it slightly. Uh, I had a lot of yeah. information on it and it was very hard to decipher. What happens is when you put everything on there at once without being able to, I guess, like sort of sort it out, it just creates giant blobs and you can't really yeah. see what, you know, what exactly is happening on the, you know, on the, um, with all the collisions, like where they're at. So we're still okay. working on that. I should have something for you by next meeting. Um, I don't know if the solution may be to have multiple uh, maps, you know, I, I mean, like one for like that we're adding to one that is similar to the, the report that I make for you guys, you know, that shows sort of new maps, maybe, you know, I, I don't know, honestly, what the solution is, but it's not, I was able, I found a solution with a Google product, it, it worked. So um, there, it's there. It's just, it was just too much. It was just too much information to decipher. And it was very hard to get, you know, like, when you wanted to see something, okay, it looks like there's a lot of collisions at one intersection. When you look closer, um, it included uh, things that, you know, like uh, I'm trying to, um, like hit and run, like things that don't really necessarily need to be on there. Um, online reports, things that, that sort of showed up on there that maybe aren't representative of what uh, you guys need to see. So, I mean, another idea was maybe to just only include like injury collisions. Um, because it would, you know, that might show you more. I mean, I don't, like I said, we're open to suggestions on that. Well, maybe rather than have you try and guess what number we're thinking uh, on a monthly basis, you know, I'll volunteer my time and we can find a time next week, you know, take yeah, a half hour and talk it through. If you'd like to take a look at it? Yeah, we can, absolutely. Yeah, come up with some ideas about the best mm -hmm. way to do it. Uh, I'll no take that. At all. So yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, we can if find I may, some time. through the chair. Yes, Commissioner. Going back to Burlingame Avenue and the pedestrian being hit at, at California Drive. A um, couple of comments. First, um, what lighting is good for motor vehicles at an intersection is not necessarily pedestrian friendly or bicycle friendly at an intersection. That, yeah. So pedestrians need lighting that's um, low, lower to the ground. And then that's in front of them so that it's, you're not just lighting up their head with, from an LED light that's up 50 feet. They need to have their body illuminated by the lighting at a, at a crosswalk, especially one as important as Burlingame Avenue and California Drive, which I believe is our number one Switters pedestrian hit intersection in the city by the volume, just by the sheer volume of the pedestrians there and a lot of young pedestrians there as well. Um, so pedestrians need lower lighting with it shining on them. They need the crosswalk illuminated brighter than the entire roadway so that when you get to a crosswalk, 
especially one as important as this, it can't be everywhere, but um, that it's brighter than the rest of the street, so that it's far more important um, as far as that goes. And then as far as Switter's reports, you know, to have a map, I'd like to have one map for pedestrians, collisions, injury or not, just where are the hits happening? Um, one for bicyclists and then a different one for motor vehicle hits so that we aren't assuming motor vehicle hits are pedestrians. So I'd like to have three different ones to look at because the intersections of what's bad for a bike like Rynet and California Drive is not bad for a pedestrian. That's correct. Uh, I'd like to that may also make it more readable. Like it might be, you know, to, instead of having all three things overlaid, breaking right. it into those three separate reports may make it more readable and usable. I think that's a good idea. We could try that and I could show that uh, to Chair Wenton um, next week sometime. Yeah, before, uh, we can take a look at it, see what that looks like and look at some, look at those and other alternatives. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Sergeant. For now, if anyone has any questions about any other ones. Yeah, I have a general question if I may through the chair. Please. Sergeant, um, and you may not be able to answer this, but I'm just curious, is there any intel that you can share with us about any protests next Wednesday in our area, areas that maybe we sh should stay away from? Um, maybe you heard anything? I'm unaware of any that are um, affecting our area. I know that we are um, prepared for anything that's unexpected. However, there's I've, I'm not aware of anything planned in anywhere, honestly, anywhere on the peninsula at this point, but, okay. um, you know, definitely it's an, it's an evolving situation and, okay. and, but I haven't, I haven't been made aware of anything. Okay. I know that several agencies have made announcements similar to, you know, what I just said, basically that they haven't heard anything, but they're we're prepared nonetheless. And, um, you know, we'll be on the ready if we need to be. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Martos. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, okay, uh, with that, we can get back to Commissioner Israel uh, and her point about Chapin Avenue, which I'm very interested in hearing yes. about further. Thank you. Um, okay, so first, um, in the e newsletter that came out um, from the city today, there's a uh, link. Um, from, I mean, I'm trying, it says the city of Burlingame is conducting a study to determine the feasibility of converting Chapin into a green street. And then it has um, a link to access an online survey and give us your feedback. And I thought we discussed that and decided it was not money well spent and that there were problems with left turns into businesses and, you know, loss of parking and um, so anyway, I just thought I was surprised to see that it was brought, you know, obviously the idea is progressing after our discussion. And there, um, the second thing I wanted to mention just as an FYI is that there's a, I don't, maybe you already know this, but there's a service called Got Wheels where um, seniors do have access for 24 seven rides for um, uh, $5 a one way. Um, if you're over the age of 70 and that goes like all the way from like El Granada to Brisbane and you know, as far south as, well. Is that a city of, is that, did that grow out of the city of San Mateo program or is that the city of San Mateo? It's from, it's, it says it's um, funding is provided by the County of San Mateo, but the program was developed by Peninsula Family Services. Oh, okay. So it, something just to put on yeah. your radar um, and if anyone doesn't get the city e-newsletter and wants me to forward that, um, let me know. Um, but then I did have two communications okay. this month. Normally I'm not that busy. So first one was from a resident who asked for a very reasonable thing. She, she said the corner of Alturas Drive and Margarita Avenue is a sharp right angle blind corner. Um, and it's on a, oh, and it's on a slope, so uh, vehicles are prone to, you know, speeding. And so all these families are out walking. And she, all she simply requested having a convex traffic mirror at the corner. There's already a lamp post at the, just at the right location. Um, so I can um, send this 
um, email. Oh, I did send that to you, Mr. Wong, right? I, I Didn't I forward that to you? I think you're still on mute. Sorry. Uh, I don't recall that one. We'll take a look at it, but typically we don't have any standards to install a convex mirror in the right away because it's who knows when it changes the you know the, the angle. We haven't done that, so we'll try to look at some all other means up there. We'll go up there and take a look and see uh, what we can do. I'll work with Mr. Sai on that one. Okay, I will. Um, but I will send this to you if again. You could, that'd be great. And then this, and, and let me know, you guys, my earbuds um, are about to die. So let me know if I go blank by waving or something. But um, the other thing is I received a communication from a gentleman named Sam Israelit, whom I re am related to, <laughs> my husband. So um, he said basically that um, traffic now that it's getting a little heavier again in front of Burlingame Plaza, um, if you are exiting the plaza onto El Camino Real and you know you have that protected lane where you turn right and head toward Truesdale, um, cars, when there's a backup, cars are now driving through um, past the entrance into Lenardi's and continuing where people are coming out thinking they have a protected lane. He said he's almost been hit three times in the past two months um, and that we could maybe put those little... Um, what are they called? The little sticks the that stick up? through the chair, the delineators. And you know, we'll we'll contact Caltrans because I believe previously uh, it was a solid line there, and Cal we had we requested Caltrans repaint that, and maybe that line's broken up, and people are crossing because they it's no longer solid; it's broken up or faded. Well, so. It's not that part where you can merge. It's the part like right at the very beginning. So they're they're definitely breaking the law. They're you okay, know so driving the beginning, not, over. not as you're leaving the plaza. Yeah. Just yeah. South so I okay. And I, again, I can send you a photo. I forgot that that would be um, kind of Caltrans, but it is. I mean, it is one of our streets that abuts sure. uh, El Camino. So I can send you. My husband did a mock up of the aerial view of the um, of the intersection. And That'd be that's great. It. That's it. I'll send that to you, Mr. Wong. Okay. Oh. Uh, was there anybody else? I had one request. I okay. Had, I had a senior citizen reach out to me um, about Old Bayshore and Airport Boulevard near where Broadway crosses at the ball field, I guess the light there, they need more time to cross. They, they can't get across with the lighting, uh, the time on the lighting. So they're, um, so I, I said maybe we could get it timed for senior citizen crossing as opposed to adult, healthy adults. So to reduce the miles per hour of the pedestrians and get it dropped down. So she, uh, she's asking for that old Bay Short Airport Broadway crosswalk light. I don't know what the. Uh, the just for clarification, it's crossing airport or crossing Broadway going. Yes. I mean, There's either way. Path. It's not. And they couldn't get it. It was too quick, okay. quick for them. Thank you. That was it. Take a look at that. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from the other commissioners? I had one uh, from Burlingame Hills. It turned out they were mostly concerned about stuff that was in Hillsboro, um, but we did address it. So uh, the citizen was in Burlingame. <laughs> the areas of concern turned out to be in Burl Hillsboro. Um, I had nothing else. Uh, hearing nothing else, I think we could move on quickly uh, to the committee reports. Um, I'm guessing we don't have anything in any of those. Okay, okay. no one's speaking up. So uh, future agenda items. Uh, what, what do we think is coming up in the coming months? Uh, by the way, Commissioner Bush, speaking of future agenda items, uh, will you come back uh, for, I think we're gonna try and do a commendation for Commissioner Launder next month. Uh, I'd love it if, uh, you would come back uh, if, you, if you can make a little time at the beginning to come back. Uh, 
that'd be great. And then you may have to come back again for uh, another former commissioner's commendation, uh, TBD. Cool. Yeah, good point. That's, a, that's, that's the power of uh, Zoom, right? You, you don't have to fly back from Utah. For that. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. And um, Mr. Wong, we were in our session, we were talking about um, other potential uh, agenda items. Uh, we did mention, uh, through the chair, we did mention Oak Grove, uh, uh, Carolyn Signal. So we'll be bringing that back I think it'll be next month, but uh, I'll confirm with Ms. Mai and make sure that we're, we're based on today's meeting, we can get everything ready for you guys. Um, Mr. Wong, as part of the engineer's report, could you give us some feedback on the Peninsula Avenue overcrossing? Because I think there's a meeting next week with San Mateo. I don't know, do you attend those? Uh, uh, this one, I, I, I may. I, I've sometimes I've snuck in, just kind of sat in the back to hear what they've been saying. Okay. Or Mr. Sire or somebody, it'd be nice to get feedback on that. Maybe I'll attend as well. I won't really be able to sneak in. It'll be a Zoom meeting. So I'll be, <laughs> change my name. Uh, Mr. Wong? Yes. Um, could, could we get also, um, as you know, as we received an email from Mr. Velasco, um, can we get um, an update also on the Broadway, California project that we discussed. Yeah, I know you changed yes. lighting. And then we were going to talk about eliminating parking. Like, just, just let us know where we are on that. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. And more broadly, I mean, that intersection continues to be tough. So uh, is there anything in the pipeline with rethinking those lanes and how they're laid out and the strategies? I mean, we. Even even with less traffic, we still get backups there. I think where we through the chair, I think where we left that was we're going to uh, try to do the improvements to eliminate the parking yeah. on the California side. Shift the and that's the tougher part. Shift the bike lane facility up against the curb, mm -hmm. and then just kind of open up the uh, southbound. And that's where we just have to uh, see where we can uh, try to get it done sooner than later. Okay. Especially, I believe some of that green marking was just not regular green marking. It was a special material for the cyclists where it didn't have the thickness of our regular, but it still had some tackiness. So you, they weren't going to slip on. So it's not something our crew can do per se. So we will have to look at that, but that, that's where we last. We weren't going to do wholesale improvements yet or changes yet. We're going to kind of do this, take a step back and see if that frees it up. But, I believe I, the last thing I saw on, on the timing, it's the timing has improved some of the efficiency through there. But again, we're talking, you know, it's it, it's tough and it's it's a mess because of you got two controllers and some of the issues we have there, it's because we I'm sorry, two intersections, a single controller, and that's what makes it difficult because what's some something's happening or not happening at Broadway, California, at Carolyn and Broadway, something's happening and, and it's mm -hmm. tied together. Again. Uh, great separation where we're, we'll break out the two intersections, let alone reduce the train crossing, but we'll break out the intersections and have individual controllers for each. Uh, yeah. It'll be a lot better, but. I mean, I, the other challenge is no one wants to be in that leftmost lane, yeah. right? Because it, it does, very few people, like if you're in that leftmost lane, you likely have to make a lane change on the track, you know, right after you get over the tracks. So you, you have this backup because no one will even go into that left. You have this like wasted lane. Uh, so I don't know if there's a way to rethink that and that would ameliorate things while we're waiting for the grade separation to happen, you know, in a you couple know, decades. Through the chair, I think we've even put some uh, temporary signage out there, electronic signage saying, you know, folks to shift over and use that lane because there is enough, especially if you're going southbound 101, you can get over. I'm not saying it's it, 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 you can just do it like that and change lanes, but you can get over. There's enough distance. It's not like if you're going to Carroll, it's a different story. It's a little tighter, but and th this situation may not, uh, even with grade separation, other than we'd be able to give it more timing, not to get into discussion and give more timing to do it because that'll still be there, right? We're still going to have those streets there connected to Broadway. Yeah. So. Oh, I, don't, I don't want to engineer it for you, but. 
God. When you're driving it, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> it's hard for me and I'm, you know, relatively young and, you know, but it, it I hate to be in that left lane trying to get onto, um, onto Southbound 101. And it's mainly because people are making right on reds at Carol Ann. So maybe we need to, that would be a very unpopular move, but. Um, making right on red and Caroline, you're trying to cross the tracks and make sure no one's pulling out in front of you. So anyway, food for thought. Not okay. just tonight. That, that's a future one, but something we, we, we try to look yeah. at, but the timing there, it's all tied together right now. It's, it, it makes it tough, so. Um, through the chair, could I make a couple of suggestions for agenda please, item? Please. All right, thank you. Um, I'd like to add the California the Burlingame Station pedestrian improvements that we're getting the RFP for this month. Um, you know, I was I I'm, I was co-chair on BPAC until I joined last month here. So um, it had been our number one request in BPAC for the last two years to have that whole area redesigned. So it's been kind of like my pet project for two years. So Manito, who's also with BPAC, not on it, but with us. Um, he and I redesigned that intersection and just emailed off our design suggestion because BPAC wasn't allowed to give any feedback because the RFP request was based on the Lion Hogue con con consultants and not any access for BPAC to make anything. So we as BPAC redesigned it and want it sent off so that the engineers would also look at that. So I'd like to have the Burlingame Game Station RFP put on the agenda. And then also, I know BPAC is working on the, their priority list for the implementation. And so maybe have a section on that for next month so we could discuss our priorities for the next year for the BPAC project implementations. Well, I, I'll add, I taking the second one first, I, I do think we should. I, I, I'd like to synchronize our timing with BPAC. If, if, if next month is too soon, I'll wait an extra month, but I, but I certainly would, as they start to think about those priorities, want to have space on our agenda to engage with BPAC about that. Um, I'm a little less clear on the, the, on the RFP for California, uh, in the Burlingame train station. I, my, I read that RFP and, I, and thank you, you sent it to me, Commissioner Lee, I appreciate it. It sounds like, I mean, they, they are, the RFP is to have someone do the designs, right? So we're just, we're, in fact, we're hiring someone to do the designs. So in terms of timing, we have to let the city hire someone first and then they're gonna propose designs, right? And then we, don't According to the RFP, we comment on those, right? No, I thought it was the design was going to be based on the Lion Hogue design that a different consultant had done. And BPAC hasn't had any input into that design. So we'd like to expand the input range into that design further. Because it was based on Lion Hogue, which BPAC had absolutely no design input into. Um, unless Mr. Wong, am I mistaken? Yeah, you know, through the chair, uh, again, uh, the process now is just selecting a consultant to finalize the desire to take take that and um, move forward no different than California. But again, there's tweaks. I mean, it, what we have now is a concept. It's not a, it's not a 35 percent. It's not any sort of plan. So we will be working with there is there are meetings set up for a teaspoon and a, a, a I have to double check if there was how much community outreach, but we will be bringing it back here. But by next month, we won't we won't be any place to do that. We still have to go into select the firm and then get into negotiations about their scope and their their ultimately their costs. So um, we we will be able to bring the design, but it won't be we won't have anything next month because we still need council to approve them at that point. Okay, so I know BPAC did submit a plan just tonight because that was part of our meeting. So would would the city be willing to look at that and add it to the food for thought and let BPAC some have some input into it? Uh, through the chair, uh, we will we will take this and we'll share it with uh, whoever we ultimately select and have them take a crack and see what they say on. 
I'm looking at right now. So. All right. Um, if people have agenda items that they would like like us to address, uh, feel free to um, let me know. Um, and you know, when we set our agenda um, later in the month, uh, we can take it into account. Um, okay. With that, uh, I think that's all we got tonight, right? Um, I think we can adjourn. All right. I miss the ability to uh, chat with people after these meetings uh, <laughs> on non-public business. Uh, when you're for, for the